to follow me here, but uh, my name is Gary Roberts RMTV. I'm currently wishing I was at an arm wrestling event, but I'm not. I am on a road trip driving my mother-in-law's vehicle from Chicago to Oregon, where we just relocated to. And uh, she's flying there, but I needed to get the vehicle there. And so I'm on a road trip, and I want to know what's going on with the arm wars. And Carol Carolyn Loomis, Loomis, she put it in. in uh, she put in uh, a chat somewhere. Hey, can you can you just go live just so we can chat about it? And I woke up this morning. I drove uh, twelve hours yesterday and was so tired, I had to pull over. And uh, anyways, I won't be looking at you because I have to focus on the road. But I basically drove till almost midnight and I was so tired, but I knew I wanted to watch Uncle John Arm Wrestler, so uh, I have my, my mother-in-law's dog, Oliver, this little pooch down here. Anyways, he woke up. I-80 West. He woke up exactly, he had to go to the bathroom, so he woke me up. And, uh, I don't need this turn off. He woke up exactly the, uh, right when Uncle John was going on, and I clicked, and it was like, oh, Neil is live. I was concerned. I did a super chat. I say, hey, if your internet's bad, don't go live, because it was a horrendous experience for me. Uh, when I was at Travis's last event and uh, with John Brzezink and Chan Shaw and the uh, internet was bad, it was like horrendous. I would never wish the stress of wanting to deliver content to peeps, you guys, and uh, having it go south. It just, I would never wish that on people that I care and love for. So when Neil Pickup said his test was terrible, I was like, don't do it, man. They'll eat you alive. Because the commentators, you people, we're not really nice about it. You know what I mean? You remember. You remember. Anyways, somebody reminded me in the chat that Neil Pickup is far more loved than I am. So that's a good point. Anyways, so I woke up at 5 a.m. And... Man, Uncle John was just getting started with arm wrestling. I was like, damn, thanks, Oliver. It's perfect timing. Anyways, so I'm watching the feed. I'm like, hey, this connection is not that bad. This is, this is fine. Boom. So Uncle John starts arm wrestling. The first match that I see is it's a really low slip, and I was afraid that he was going to get called for the loss. But he got the strap, which is what he said he wanted. And then, bam! Bitch slapping, peeps. Uncle John really surprised me. He made it sound like his right wasn't that awesome compared to his left. So to see him have such a dominating performance over there, and Uncle John, I really love the, uh, I really love the energy. It was awesome. Anyways, that's I'm into that shit. So beautiful done. Then the feed went down. I guess they had a, a break, hour and a half break. I tried to go back to sleep because I knew I was going to hit. I got to try to drive at least 12 hours today as well. It's a total 30-hour trip. And ideally, I want to get to Oregon and drop off this call, car as fast as possible because I, I Regina's flying there. Then I got to help her get set up. And Anyways, long story point is I got to get the vehicle from A to B as quick as possible and last night was kind of rough I tried to watch I watched uh, John Brzezink's live streams the last few ones that I missed uh, the one where he said hey Gary Roberts hasn't gotten back to me so funny enough I was like oh shit I gotta call John Brzezink so I actually pulled over I should have been driving but I lost about 40 minutes yesterday uh, I lost about 40 minutes because I was I was talking to John on the side of the road and I was like, damn it. I you know, you call someone up, the greatest arm wrestler of all time, you think it's gonna be a you know five minute conversation. Next thing you know, you've lost some severe ground in your road trip. 
He's like, damn it. Anyways, we got that locked down, spoke to John. Uh, man, he's doing awesome. I can't, I think that might, I thought me coming back into the sport of arm wrestling was the greatest thing to ever happen. But damn, John Brzezink becoming a YouTube just might be the greatest thing that's ever happened in my arm wrestling uh, experiences. I mean, it's it ranks so high up there. I can't, I just can't believe it. I'm speechless. So I'm talking to John Brzezink and he's like, oh, I don't know. I really got to get better at the editing. It's like, oh my, I'm like, quality, what are you talking about, dude? You're John Brzezink, dude. If there's anyone that can get away with being a newbie, it's John Brzezink, the greatest arm wrestler of all time. It is, watching you struggle with YouTube is like a beautiful thing. That's like part of the magic, bro. I, in my opinion, John Brzezink should never tip his hand that he's figuring things out. He should always pretend like, not pretend, but he should always play the newbie guy. Like, oh, like let's say he's, gets to where he wants and doing like world-class editing and it's like, it's so cool because average people we can relate we can relate to trying to figure out technology it's part of the magic anyways uh tangent aside get back on the road uh, where was i before i started talking about the greatest arm wrestler of all time john Brzink. so anyways uh yesterday was a little bit rough watched all the podcasts watched some Derek smith i'm still trying to finish his last one uh, Watch some Uncle John, watch some Fix. And uh, I was like, you know what? Caroline might be on something. If I just do a live stream, I'm driving. So I am not able to know what is going on right now. So in the chat, uh, yeah, I'm driving through Nebraska, middle of nowhere. The internet connection probably is going to be funkified. But, anyways, the point is, even if you lose me a little bit, the. the Peeps should be up. You're my journalist, man. What is going on in the sport of arm wrestling? Tell me everything. I need to know. I need to know what's happening in arm wars. I have 30 of you, journalists, Arm TV Nation. Put in the chat. What am I missing? All I watched was John Brzezink bitch slap somebody. I don't even know who the dude was. Uh, right handed. So if he can do that, left-handed, man, I win some money, bro. So, your journalists, who's live? Who's posted videos about what's arm wrestling, uh, what's happening in arm wars? Is there anybody watching who knows somebody there? I need, I need updates, man, because I'm on a road. Oh, the whole thing with Caroline, Carolyn, she's like, hey, just to post the chat so we can chat about it, which I'm sure there's plenty of other places you could chat but since I'm on the road I got nothing better to do uh, so I'm gonna keep this up give me someone oh yesterday you know I called some family members I haven't called uh, you know I'm not great at uh, staying connected with extended family you know life is really busy with uh, everything that's going on so yesterday besides watching the podcast getting caught up on my arm wrestling news i also called a few family members and that killed a couple hours who people i haven't spoke to in, in a while so anyways i was like okay well if we have this chat going and people are kind of filling me in what i'm missing i can also just randomly bullshit about what's going on i can help state uh, keep me engaged, awake, alert, while I'm on the most boring highway of all time, the 80 West, driving through Nebraska. Got my coffee in hand. I see some comments going, but I'm going to be safe. I'm not going to read them, but I want to know everything. I have an addiction. Tell me. Tell me everything that's going on. How many people have stolen Neil Pickup's footage of Uncle John bitch slapping somebody and reposting it on their channel. How many people already? Oh, a super chat. Hey, kid, this is for you. You asked for it. Bam. It was all for you, baby. It's a good idea, by the way. 
um, you know, help keep the community engaged, give me some random people to just spew some thoughts and kill some time. And hopefully I have like 1,400, 1,500 miles to drive over the next couple days. Hopefully this live feed can, uh, you know, kill some of that time. Plus when I do pause, it'll give me something to read. So I look forward to uh, uh, reading the chat later back, back later. And if you all remember, if you've been watching the Tuesday night broadcast, when I do open up my heart and let everyone know that I am addicted to comments, it's like, I have two addictions, okay? I have coffee addiction and I have reading comments addiction. And I get really sad just to, if you did not hear that, I, I kind of like embarrassed to say that I like refresh and see if anyone's commented. And if it goes like, if the Arm TV channel goes over 60 minutes and there's not one comment on the entire like YouTube channel, I get like all sad, glum, bumming. Anyways, when is John Brzezink arm wrestling? It is now 8.50. I'm pretty sure it's like the same as Texas where I'm at. I'm not a big geography dude, but I'm pretty sure Texas is almost 9 a.m. down there. So what time does John Brzezink arm wrestle? I was listening to the live broadcast. Oh, I was listening to Devin Larry say that he'd be nervous about arm wrestling Dimitri and that uh, John Brzezink shouldn't take him lightly. It's like, I only know Dimitri when he arm wrestled Robbie Burnett. I mean, is Dimitri that good that he'd make Devin Laird nervous? Really, he's that far up there? That's crazy. Also, oh, so I talked to John Brzezink yesterday and I called Todd Hutchings. Now, Toddzilla, me and him, I consider me and him really, really tight back in the day. I mean, we spoke often, hung out with his family, been in his house many times. I've posted hours of interviews with him on Arm TV over the years. Some of that I did share. Uh, anyways, he told me it's completely random that John Rzenk and him both started a YouTube channel within like days of each other. So I want to talk to, I've been meaning to call him, but I was like, dude, you're, you're starting YouTube now? Like how serious, how serious is this? And he's like, now, I don't know if you all know, but Todd Hutchings is like engineer genius mind. He's one of the smartest dudes, literally. He's like, man knows his shit in and out. And so when he like, I'm sure, you know, a lot of elite arm wrestlers, you know, they take their training and everything, but seriously, but Todd Hutchins has like a scientist mind. Like when it comes to arm wrestling and getting better as an arm wrestler, like he really does approach it with like scientific methods. Like, I mean, the guy, like, I believe he journals like everything, you know, that what he does, like, it's crazy. Anyways. He really is like, no, I'm, I'm serious. In fact, I feel like I can talk about this. He didn't say this was like private information or anything, but he's like, you know, um, in the last couple of years, pandemic, you know, while kind of like not being able to do anything, he's like, you know, I was losing uh, motivation, not sure what to do with myself. And he's like, you know, I you know, gotta find a reason to train. And it's like this whole YouTube channel business it's like, you know, helping me get fired up again. It's like, I really feel like I got something to add to the community and uh, I got some cool ideas and I want to be like committed and like really do it. And I'm like, I mean, that's, that's amazing, dude. That's, I, I feel like I'm living and so everyone knows my story. If you're on this channel, you know my story. I mean, Back when I was filming arm wrestling, let's go way, 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 way back. Okay. 
before I was filming arm wrestling, I was filming weddings. And nobody getting married films their own wedding. The whole point of having a wedding videographer is so you don't have to worry about that shit. And when I found the sport of arm wrestling, that was kind of the thing. Hey, we're filming you so you don't have to worry about that. A lot of people used to, you know, back in the day, camcorders, a lot of people used to take camcorders to the tournament and film. And, and a lot of people really, it was just really for your own private collection. And most people that I ran into, they considered it a nuisance. Like, they're like, it's annoying. I, I want to have a record of my business. But obviously, everyone would love their own personal videography like a wedding so you can focus on your wedding day and you just know all the moments are captured and easy done that the thought of arm wrestlers wanting to be their my like content creators it really it didn't exist this is just facts okay so I was around the sport for 10 plus years with like you know arm wrestlers were just arm wrestlers they were not there was no platform for them to be content creators. Arm TV was the platform. We all know that over the years, arm wrestling had its coverage. It sparked in, like, coverage. It's like, when I first found the sport of arm wrestling, Harold Ryden, the great Harold Ryden, uh, hasn't really been involved in the sport that much, but he was an awesome arm wrestler back in the day. He quote told me, arm wrestling is the largest underground sport in the world. And I was like, whoa, that just intrigued me. The largest underground sport in the world. Is that true? It's fun to say. I'm not 100% sure the accuracy of it. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of sports that are underground, wish they would have more coverage. So this whole, I met this guy, Jeremy Plaster, at Harold Ryden's house. And he said, I showed him a, a video. I brought over a DVD. I played the, the tape of me editing arm wrestling. And that was nothing. Like, uh, anyone who'd filmed arm wrestling, they just filmed it and they put it on a VHS tape and threw it in a box. I actually like applied some editing and some music and, uh, you know, people told me, hey, nobody does this. And, like, uh, Jeremy Plash said, hey, man, I literally would fly you. I'd fly you to my house. When I'm host hosting a tournament, I'd pay you to film. And I thought to myself, you know, weddings, it's so hard to find wedding gigs. You know, it's a very competitive business. There's thousands of wedding videographers. And every, every gig, you need to find a new, a new, a new couple. It's like stressful, right? It just, you're trying, I, was, I was more just trying to break into the business. I by no means had, I mean, I filmed maybe one wedding every four months, six months. And then I was working, I was working at a restaurant, waiting tables, and I worked at the Four Seasons doing valet and some bell. And so, yeah, I was totally just trying to break in to the business. And the whole concept of arm wrestling being a personal arm wrestling videographer, I mean, it just made sense. I was like, wait, 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 wait. You're saying like I could just follow around the same guys and all that they, and I'd never, I mean, that'd just be like an ongoing relationship. And then of course, back then, the only internet kind of streaming video models that you had to look at was uh, pornography websites. Back then, you know, porn wasn't free like it is today. You actually like had to subscribe and I was like, hmm, I wonder if arm wrestlers would pay like a small monthly fee. Anyways, boom, arm TV was born. But the reason this whole point got brought up is because, dude, arm wrestlers were not content creators back then. They were like, Dude, thank you for doing this. I don't have to do it. You're filming everything. Awesome. Boom. And it was like, boom, I could put my camcorder away. I was told time after time after time, hey, I love that I can just go to a tournament. I know you've got the coverage. Boom. Good to go. 
this world that we live in, we're like Todd Hutchins and John Brzezink, our content creators. It's like, it feels like some alternate universe. It's like so magical. And it's like, what? It's crazy. Anyways, I'll continue talking about it because it's so, uh, it's just so crazy. Like, like today. So, our John Brzezink is arm wrestling Demetrius. John just gonna, is he gonna give someone his cell phone? Is he gonna go live? Like, how's it how's it gonna work, man? What you what you gonna do? Anyways, post down in the comments how many we got. We got 28 people. We've lost a few. Where'd you go? I hope you're out doing your research so you can come back and put in the chat what I'm missing. Anyways, I need times, I need results, I need everything. Who's live? All of it. Hook me up. Do it, please. And you know. Chat, chat in the comments, talk to each other. You know, join the community, man. Join the community. Thumbs up that shit. That's it. Uh, so, oh, anyway, so I watched Uncle John in the live stream, and then I was like, okay, I'm gonna go back to sleep. And they had an hour and a half break. But the reason I went live, I tried to refresh, and they weren't back. So. Did the internet connection go down? Or were they just not back yet? Because I feel like an hour and a half has has passed from when they paused the stream. So, uh, I was like, oh, damn, I, mean, I didn't even, you know, before I could go on that stream, and since I couldn't get a stream back, now I need you guys. Talk to me. The chat's gonna be up, we'll keep it rolling. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Maybe I'll just try. Somebody chatted. More, more chats. The live is buffering eternally. Ugh. Uh, yeah, that's painful. You know, back in the day we were trying to do, you know, I early experimentation with live broadcasts. And I really had hopes. I really had high, high, high hopes that upon my return, that all the technology would be just the wizard's tits, as Neil Pickup would say, so we could just do everything we need to do. But holy shit, the fact that it's still, I mean, Neil said it on his broadcast last night, when you get that amount of people on the network at the same time, the concentration of it, the, yeah, the, the foundation of the, the the underlying structure of everything it's just it's not built to uh, to scale at that capacity everyone trying to post social media yada 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 uh, on the chat hear me out here there's got to be a I was thinking of like if I was a bajillionaire I'm always thinking of little side businesses there's got to be portable towers. Let's say I invested in all these like trucks. There were portable towers that, that people could rent if they're hosting events. And I drive my truck up, park it. You pay your little fee for you to have like the fastest internet connection in the world dedicated just for you. So let's say um, at Arnold Classic. There's a hundred thousand people rolling through there. Neil Pickup was like, "Hey, I, I want a truck just dedicated for me." So come in, set the little tower up. You know, I picture just like the dish. So like a little food truck with all the components inside the truck. Put up your little dish, and and then Neil, because he's the one who got the truck, he gets access. And then the so there's one man who's got access to the truck, but so the, if there's 100,000 people there, 999,999 people are on the one network and Neil Pickup is on the dedicated network and boom, he gets his shit. But, you know, arm wrestling probably couldn't uh, handle the, the finances kind of burden of like a cost like that. So obviously that would be open to anyone. Anyone who could rent the truck, let's say we got tr 20 trucks around the world, any big events, boom, we kind of roll your truck up in. It's like, dude, that's gotta be a thing. Now, I Googled it, these portable towers, they're like, 
a semi truck has to roll up with one of these bitches. But come on, the technology's got to be to the point where it could just be a little high powered, you know, food truck size, little, you know, camper man. Anyways, that needs to be like a thing. And someone mentioned in Neil's chat that there was like some sort of portable thing. Because honestly, going live with the uh, with suspects, with, like how can you, if you're a business and you want to give a live product and you never know what the network is going to be, how many people are going to be on the network, they're going to share with it. I mean, how can you uh, give a consistent quality product when you're in that state of never knowing? So anyways, I'm saddened that upon my return of arm wrestling, these were issues that we dealt with in 2006 when I tried to go live with the Nationals. It's like, geez, we have not figured that out yet. And the funny thing is, we're just going more HD. So now you can stream 4K, but the structure, the structure isn't where it needed to be to begin with. Anyways, that's a little pet peeve of mine. So, Caroline, Caroline or Caroline? I hope I'm getting it. Uh, I hope I'm not offending you by saying it wrong. Anyways, thank you for another super chat reminder. We are here for you, so you can. So you better be chatting, sister. Chat up. Ask people questions. What's going on? Tell me what's going on with arm wars. Tell me what's going on. When does Texas roll up? When does it begin? Um. So since we're live, maybe I'll just keep chatting. 30 dedicated, hardcore, Arm TV Nation. I appreciate you, 30. Uh, make sure you thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Um, so I can't remember when I returned to the sport of armors, but I've been uploading videos now for a year and a half. Been back. Man, time has flown by. Um, oh, let's talk about arm wars for a second. When I was watching that stream and I was like, so you guys know I hosted a little ROTN, right? And then like we had a small turnout, but great guys. And I still haven't posted that show yet. Damn it! So much going on. Here's the thing. Here's what I struggle with as an editor. I want to post stuff daily. So I kind of want to post so sometimes, like, let's say I'm really busy with the family, I'll post a smaller clip or less, uh, a clip that needed to be less edited. So I'm in this constant state of when I want an arm wrestling, when I want to edit an arm wrestling show that requires, I had three cameras that day, intercutting three different cameras and you know, adding music and intercutting the interviews. I struggle because that takes more than a day to cut together. So what I end up doing is I put that off and I just post something to my daily stuff. And then I just get in this weird thing where I was like, I gotta get some, something every day, even though I don't consistently stick with it every day. I gotcha. Uh, so what ends up happening is a month goes by we were selling a house, true, that got me sidetracked, but um, now I find myself, I have to pause, probably on TV wouldn't be updated for about a week, so I can go just kick out the show and, and post that, and hopefully you guys like it, but anyways, man, watching all the, Neil Pickup's amazing, the, he does what he, I mean, and I was hearing he had uh, a lot of logistical logistical snafus and travel for athletes that's stressful man I've said it before on my streams but all you guys out there specifically Neil who are putting an entire show together dedicated on matchups that you've been hyping up that stakes are on at such a high level at a venue like that I mean this is this is high level stress man amazing that uh that you guys do that i personally man 
it's not I've spoken before about liking tournament format I like super matches I liked watching Uncle John wax that dude's ass this morning I don't know who it is and I'm trying to be funny no disrespect to that dude but the as a promoter man if you just think about oh I'm gonna have a tournament it's open just you show up it's like oh that's the kind of that's the stress level I like it's still stressful but man having people like not be able to get on airplanes or oh can someone put in I messaged Ryan Espy he was very short with me just answer I've been traveling three days Neil Pickup said he's been traveling for like nine days but of course he said it in a way that like I, I thought obviously like maybe there's some exaggeration but I want to know the Ryan Espy story like has he been stuck in an airport for three days I forgot to check my Facebook I got back on the road but anyway, so I'll message Ryan, but if anyone else knows, and I did go check Ryan's uh, YouTube page, but the last post that I saw was before he left, so hopefully he's going to be blogging about those experiences, man. Uh, so anyways, back to... Uh, I miss Beauty and the Beast... Travis Bajans. I retired Barry Bourne and Travis Bajans. I'm just kidding. You know, Travis was all excited about uh, uh, social media in the beginning. And I just think, uh, you know, I don't know. We knew it could happen. We knew the show could fade. And I've been meaning to call him up. We, you know, the event's coming up October 23rd. Paul Lynn, John Brzezink. It's really going to be interesting. We'll have to ramp up the talking about that event, you know, after we see the results of this one. And again, I don't know if any of you are just tuning in, but like, Dimitri, can Dimitri, is this guy going to slow down John Brzezink at all? Like, what's going on? John certainly isn't like taking it lightly he's been training real hard he says he's ready but i'm like where does dimitri rank in uh in arm wrestling in the united states i have no idea and as a person in my position some of you will think oh, well you should know that by now if you're gonna be like you know running a podcast you should know your shit hey guys there's so much going on you can't know everything just like I don't know the guy's name that Uncle John waxed this, this morning. Whacked him. Bam! I gotta be honest. I'm really shocked. He really looked dominant. I was like, man, Uncle John is not a joke. He, he's like a real arm wrestler. It's really impressive. Uh, so, it'll be interesting to see what happens with Mr. Bradford. Uh... I'm not sure if we're being successful here because I only see chats every so often on here. Come on, say something. I'm gonna count from 10 down to zero. If somebody doesn't say something, I'm driving this car off the road right now. 10, nine, nice, nine, what it work, it work, bitches, yeah. I was gonna fall asleep probably in 90 minutes but you two commented, I don't know what you said, but that just got me another five minutes. Another five minutes on the road. Holy shit, it works. Keep chatting, keep chatting, what's up? Anyways, it's nine o'clock. I can't, I can't read the chat. I don't know what's going on. Does John Brzezink if John Brzezink aren't, okay, somebody who knows something about the Texas State Arm Wrestling Tournament, okay? The Texas State Arm Wrestling Tournament. Does John Brzezink arm wrestle like early in the day or is he not going to like later at night? Just type, if he's early in the day, type one. If he's going to be later, type two. I can see that part. One or two. Early is one two is later because I don't know when I should start getting hyped up 
for John Brzezinski and Dimitri. Give it to me. One, early. Oh, snap. Early, so what's happening? It's like gonna go off soon. And I'm assuming, can you imagine this alternate world that we live in where John Brzezink's just gonna start going live randomly? What? Dude, have you guys looked? I don't, I will, how many people we got here? 30, uh, 29 people. So I'm gonna admit something. I don't, I don't, okay. So there's this app called Social Blade. It gives you all the YouTube stats and you go in there and of course I put all the armor sling channels because I wanna see how I'm doing compared to the other channels. And, and I'm not, I don't monitor it religiously, but I know the numbers. You know, I know it, the, the YouTube analytics, the stats are all, it's, you know, it's all scrapable. Everything about data is scrapable. Like, bam, it's out there. Somebody scrapes that shit, puts it in a little, you know, graph and psh. Anyways, Social Blade's one of those chats, or one of those websites. And we don't need to get into specifics, but a lot of the arm wrestler turned YouTubers, they all come out hot, especially if you're decently known. You come out hot, everyone's excited about you. So you get the following in the very beginning. But what happens is, is there is a tapering. There is a tapering off. So you come out hot, there's a tapering. And my thoughts are, for all you uh, want to be YouTubers, it can, it really is like, a, you guys all know the story of how drug dealers work. It's like, you know, you, you want to build your client base. So you give them a little, you give them a little free couple of hits, right? You give them a little free dose, you get them, you get them hooked. And then that's when you, you've turned them into a customer. They're hooked on your product and you, then now they come back and that's how the drug deal works. I mean, I've seen that shit in movies. I don't, I don't know firsthand, so don't think I'm like a drug dealer or anything. Anyways, YouTube, I feel, and again, it's just anecdotal, not like scientists like Todd Hutchins, but YouTube seems to do that. You start your YouTube channel, YouTube will throw you some love. They're very powerful. They can make or break anybody they want. So YouTube will throw you some early love to get you addicted to the hits. So you come back for more, you create content. Bam, bam, bam. They, they're try feeding you the little endorphin rush of the pops, of the views. Well, what happens is YouTube, they pull it back. They pull the drugs back. And they want to, it's kind of like, oh, we want to see how you do on your own. We gave you a little feeling when we give you the YouTube love. Uh, Some about, I don't know how the algorithm works, but it does work, man. So go ahead, start your YouTube channel. YouTube can give you a little bit of love in the beginning. You'll think, oh, I got some decent views on my first couple videos. And then they pull it back. So there's a pop and then there's a plateau. So curious thing to watch with John Brzezink, if there's anybody who can pop and stay, stay hot, 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 it could be John Brzezink. He could be the one that doesn't get the plateau. I mean, maybe a little plateau, but it will be very exciting and great for the sport to have another, you know, ambassador on YouTube like what Devin Laird has done. So, very excited. I'll be watching it very closely. I told John, dude, any, anything I know, I, and obviously, I, you know that I have the John Brzezink catalog, and you know in the past I've been very you know, particular about how the vi that video is used or whatever, but you know, John Brzezink is an exception, and we will be we're working something out to uh, you know, make sure the man has uh, 
uh, the ability to use some of the So, some of you messaged me, you thought, hey, how you dissing my man John? And listen, listen, I messaged John, he messaged me, he's like, of course, you know, I started a YouTube channel, but we need to talk about content. At the moment, I was out of the country. So I said, we'll be, I'll be back in the country, we definitely talk about it. But I wasn't in any rush, because in my mind, John Brzezink is doing so hot. Like, I feel like the, the older content that I have, like, should be a card that just gets played a little bit later. See what you can, let's see where this goes. So you don't want, like, so you can have a true, like, um, a true, where it's, I don't know how to describe it. Damn it, there's a word for it. When you've isolated a certain, you've tested and isolated, you don't add, you don't add a second variable until you know the results of the first one. So when you, when later on you're trying to figure out well what works and what doesn't work with YouTube, you haven't, uh, you haven't blurred the tests. So John Brzezink is doing magic just turning on his cell phone like and you know doing his stuff and then it's like i it, it's great to see let's isolate that and see if you do plateau or not plateau and then say you do get to a point where like youtube tries to plateau you out and then bam we hit you with some of the old classic contents you feeling me you feeling me anyways the long game if you're if you're with me all right. In the, yeah, right, right. Exactly. That. Because at the end of the day, this, I mean, the YouTube algorithm, it's all like AI, you know? That's just, it's, there's nobody with a big ass switch deciding who succeeds or fails over there. It's like some computer freaking program. And it's like, you know, you got to figure that shit out. Well, I personally, I mean, when we came out, when I started posting the old content, I was like, YouTube gave me the pop. I mean, per that early pop, the first days on YouTube, dude, I would have, if I kept that trajectory, I mean, I'd have 100,000 followers today. Like, it was like, it was dramatic, the love that YouTube was given. But of course, I have great footage. Don't get me wrong, I have 36,000 36, matches on our website. However, what percentage of that content is John Brzezink, Devin Laird, Michael Todd, you know, the people in the conversation today, Ingen Terzi, you know, uh, Todd Hutchings. That YouTube gives you a pop on the content you have that is also relevant today. So out of 36,000 arm wrestling matches, a lot of those matches are not, you know, even you guys, 31 of you, you will all click on John Brzezink, but you're not all clicking like the, oh my God, the EA, the, the Europeans from 2005, I thought those would pop. I mean, there's like, it's crazy to see some of those guys back then and it's like oh not many not many peeps wanted to watch so it's like oh, that's a, little, a little shocking to me anyways should I go click on everything every 30 all 30 of you, you need to go back click on everything click 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 any clack any clack any click that's the only way that shit shit is gonna blow up you need to click on everything because sadly I do have like 15 years of content to provide but it's not all relevant. You won't all watch it. But, you know, it is cool. It is cool. You know, we'll share all of it. We'll share all of it. It'll take a generation. But don't worry. It'll come. All right. Somebody post in the chat. I want to see a number. Oh. Oh, the dog. Oliver, he just tooted. It's bad, man. Dude, that's a bad toots, dog. So, uh, this road trip. 
you know, my mother-in-law, she was going to have to take the dog on the airplane. And I was like, you know, it's kind of a pain to take dogs on the airplane. I was like, I'll, I'll bring him. I'll bring him. It's no big deal. So I'm on a road trip with little Pooch. I can't show you right now, but he's, he's a fat little Shih Tzu looking, puggy looking thing. I don't even know what he is. I think it's a Shih Tzu. And he has, let's just call it, uh, he's got a snoring problem. So last night I'm driving, it's like 11 o'clock. I've been on the road for 11 hours. It's 50 minutes past Lincoln, Nebraska. And don't get me wrong, I'm really sad that I can't stop to meet up with some arm wrestlers and do the old Michael Todd road trip thing. But I, I've got to get this car, so there's really no visiting homies. Would love to do like an arm bet meetup. Anyways, I pulled over last night. Real cheap, so check in the Motel 6. Kind of shady, a little dirty. But I'm like, dude, I just need to rest. I just need to rest for a few hours. Plus, I was excited. I'm like, I'm wake up early, watch some armors, and hit the road again. And this dog snored all night. Snored bad, bad. Bad bitches, bad, bad snoring. I texted my mother-in-law, I said, how do you sleep with this this guy in the same room? He, he's a horrible snorer. Oh my gosh, so that kind of jacked me up. So that's why I'm a, a little glad that we do go live right now, because I'm gonna need you later. I'm gonna need you later. I don't know how long this feed will be up, but at some point, I'll probably log off, charge it, because right now the USB cable won't uh, extend up here. Anyways, I need you to come through for me. Chat! No chatting! Give me some. Anyways, how many hours till John Brzezink arm wrestles? Put it in there. One, two, three. How many hours? Like when I pull over to like use the restroom, I want to maybe time it to watch it or something. Hook me up. Is anyone, any other channels live right now? We have uh, 34 people in the chat. Bam. Uh, Gary, give the, I couldn't read that. I'm trying to be safe, guys. I know that, maybe. How many hours, what you got? Uh, anyways, I'll get back to my story. So YouTube gave me like the big pop, man. The big pop. I told my wife, I said, what? So, I don't know if you guys know, but I was married a couple years ago. I have a one and a half year old son and they haven't really announced it on Facebook, but my wife is five months pregnant. So I'm having a baby girl. So in total, I have a grown adult daughter born in 1996 and then I have a one and a half year old boy and now I'm gonna have another little girl that will do shit's gonna get busy around this house but I'm gonna do my best to become be pumping the arm wrestling content out and film new content anyways as a, a videographer when it found out we were having children you know, it was like, okay, my, I've gone on record, my, my wife is the one who makes the money. I, I, I got let go from CrossFit. I was doing very well working for CrossFit, but uh, things changed, boom, got laid off. And I was trying to take like corporate gigs. It's the worst job in the world, man. I've had two beautiful, best jobs in the world. The first one was on TV. The fact that I was, the fact that I was getting paid to travel around the world, meet arm wrestlers, film arm wrestling, go back and edit it. I got to work for myself. You know, this whole like work from home movement. I've been working. I've been working from. I've been working from home for like 17 years. Like, uh, it was an awesome job, and. Uh, the frustrating part about that first go-round of ARM TV, I'm a terrible business person, so like, 
paying taxes and all like understanding this is your gross revenue and what's your net like after costs like after like back in the day i used to have to buy the tapes every hour of tape was like three dollars so if i went to a tournament and i filmed 10 hours or like a nationals right i'd film 15 17 hours that's 17 times three three dollars a tape sometimes hundreds of tapes bitches i mean this like so when i was building rmtv i was like oh my gosh we did this we had this great weekend and i was like yeah but did you subtract the hotel did you subtract the airfare did you subtract the tapes did you subtract the dot the dot the dot and i was like ah oh. so it's like a lot of people like oh you you were crushing it like you, you did well that's how i i paid the rent put food on the table you know i provided it was a good job it, it was a job though good job but not enough to like like for instance i had dreams that there would be no tournament in the world that happened that did not have arm tv coverage and this is what i did when it when anyone out there there's 30 some of you you want to know how i got all this crazy content most of it i filmed myself a lot of people sent like the older stuff was sent into me but if this this weekend right now was happening in 2007 I would have been in arm wars I would have hired someone to have been in Texas so I would have had someone there paying them to get footage I wouldn't I would, there were, it was like it was really like an addiction if a tournament happened and I didn't get footage of it I like had panic attacks my best my best weekend so when people are like oh you did awesome you know you just, it's like the fact that I had to go out of business meant that it wasn't awesome enough but we had our moments and one of the coolest moments there was one weekend I can't remember I can't remember the specifics but there was one weekend there was five tournaments five tournaments on the same weekend and I had somebody filming all five of them now that's what I that was like the vision you know as you grow a brand as you grow a company like will I Gary Roberts be holding a camera you know let's say we're a multi-million dollar company would I still be the guy holding the camera yeah I don't know but the idea is obviously you have to scale it up you gotta have a crew you gotta have peeps so that was like when I knew like okay I have a vision for this shit uh, I'm gonna have a film crew at every single tournament but because my budget was limited here's what I do so this is just fodder for you crazy bitches out there still paying attention if you want to get a videographer cheap you can't pre-book pre-book comes with pre-booking comes with uh, full retail prices okay so I used Craigslist and then the jobs like there's the job I think there's a specific media video click uh, but I would wait till Friday afternoon so I would tell promoters I you know I'm gonna try to have somebody there like I'm, I'm working on it so I wouldn't Unless, um, the huge tournaments I would definitely make sure but the other four I'd wait till like Friday afternoon then I'd post I'd post an ad on Craigslist and this was before like the big cities would like charge $25 to post an ad because I could usually get away with not even paying anything for the ad So, I had really good luck in Texas. So this is a perfect example. In Texas, you know, maybe I should get back to this. 
Because I'm really like, you could, I could have hired somebody to be at Texas State right now. I could have done that. But it's like, I'm uh, more in the slow burn. I'm not, I'm more mature, I'm older, I'm past my, I mean, I'm still addicted. I want to know what's going on, but if, if you were asking yourself, hey Garrett, how did you get all that footage? I literally had like, if I didn't have coverage of a tournament, I like had panic attacks. Like I, would, I felt like I was, it was the greatest FOMO feeling, fear of missing out. You guys all heard that, FOMO, right? That's what I had, it was bad. So, like, if I couldn't get someone to get to a tournament, like, I was, I suffered. I suffered emotionally. But anyways, I'd post the ad, I'd say, looking for a videographer uh, who's free, me four to six hours worth of work, Saturday afternoon, um, let's say 175. And I'd say, uh, you know, it may, it may not be what you usually make, but it, I promise you an amazing afternoon. You'll be totally into it, filming arm wrestling. And most of the time, I would get responses from like legitimate, professional, legitimate professional like videographers. People make really good money. And they're like, I just happen to have this weekend, not booked, so. I'd be willing to take 175 bucks for uh, for covering something crazy like arm wrestling. Like, really? And I was like, yeah, man. Good times, dude. Here's the location. Here's the promoter. You're going to be working for Arm TV. What you got to do when you show up, go introduce yourself. Say this is, uh, you know, my name's Bob Jones. I'm contracted for Arm TV today. I'm here to cover. And I'd give them... Because I'm paying them so low, I keep my expectations really low, but these are professionals. You know, I'd give them a 90 second request. Like, make sure you hit record before the go. The worst thing in the world is to miss the go. So people are like, looking like they're not gonna grip up forever. You could be kind of tricky. So just, you know, if you don't wanna film the entire setup, you don't have to but just don't miss the go. And then when the match is over, don't push pause right away. There's nothing worse than anyone. You wanna be YouTubers out there and you're filming. There's nothing worse than like you hitting uh, pause too damn soon. You always want, there's always, some of the greatest stuff from arm wrestling match happens right after the win. So you always wanna make sure you have that 10 second window that you don't miss that shit. So I'd give these, these Craigslist guys this a little bit of, you know, information. And then the, they'd go film it and they'd, I don't know if they'd drop. Sometimes, you know, back in the day, they used to actually have to send me uh, a hard drive. Uh, but at some point then it became like, you know, uploading files and yada yada. It's like, uh, I mean, I... I really thought, man, I really thought we were crushing that shit. When I was filming five tournaments, I was like, boom, it's only a matter of time before I have film crews around the world. Anyways, the reason I brought this up is because when I started to get back into the sport, and it's like, oh, 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 oh. Anyways, greatest job in the world, and it, you know, things happen shit happens right not gonna whine about it but because I met Sev Amatosian of Pulling John fame he had moved over to CrossFit and dude he hooked me up it was without working for myself it was the closest to getting to work for myself because Sev was my boss and he gave me so much freedom so much freedom too much freedom actually because of, you know I ended up and the way I was paid I ended up filming more than I got paid to film and then I got paid once I turned in a project. But because I'm terrible with money, I was always in a constant state of going on new projects so I could get cut a check, but I wasn't turning in projects so I could get paid because it's easier to film than edit. And so I was in this constant state of backlog and that stress aside, I was always, I mean the freedom 
the man gave me. Uh, phenomenal. Second best job in the world. Besides RMT, it was amazing. And when I met my wife, man, I thought I'd be working for CrossFit. I mean, I always envisioned that I would bring RMTV back to life. I just didn't know how. I just needed some financing. You know, like hiring people to film tournaments, you know, I envisioned at one point if I wanted to bring RMTV back to life that it would, I had to pay someone to do it. Because, I mean, working for CrossFit was an amazing gig. I'm going to tell you, amazing gig. Like, I'm the luckiest person in the world. I don't, I mean, when it comes to the, the amount of years between Arm TV and, and CrossFit, I, I'm telling you, the, the perks of working in both fields and the connections and the people, it's like, so fortunate. Anyways, when I got let go of CrossFit, dude, let me tell you, I was walking dogs, bro. I was doing Instacart delivery. I, I saw, I was on, I can't remember how I found him, but I was working for this guy. The funny thing is, he was very similar. His, his job was to make videos for AT&T, corporate, corporate business accounts. So they were trying to, uh, they were trying to woo business clients. And so what they would do is they'd go do profiles of these cool businesses and then just say they're a customer of uh, AT&T. So like random cool gigs, he'd get like, let's say following the, the race cars or something. So they go out, they follow these guys doing race cars, and then at the end they just say, we use AT&T. So he needed help with producing these cool videos. And every job was a different one, totally different business. And I was like, hey, this is kind of cool. And uh, I was like, hey, can I go on location? He's like, nah, 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 I film, you edit. And I was like, well, that sucks. So I was hoping that maybe like we could build towards that. Anyways, the, working for this guy, I'd have to look up my name, email, but I'd actually say, I'd actually put his name out there. He was an asshole. Oh my God. A-hole! He was such a jerk, man. He would like tell me something he needed and I'd work on cutting it and uh, I'd submit him the cut and he'd be like, what's this garbage? I'm like, what do you mean? That's what you're at. And they're like, no, this and that. And they're like, I'm like, dude, this, that's not what you said, man. That's no. anyways, we just did not click. We did not click at all. And I saw my future dwindling away. I was like, if I have to work corporate jobs for guys that are not good to work for. I mean, I was blessed I worked for Seven Matosin. He was the coolest boss in the world. I mean, coolest boss. I, I'll give you a story. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to tell this story, but I'm gonna tell this story. Okay, Seven Matosian. he was really tight with Greg, Greg, Greg Glassman, the former uh, CEO and owner of CrossFit. And uh, they were supposed to go on a trip um, like across, I think it was, I think it was Amsterdam that they were supposed to meet and, and, and take out a bunch of, uh, a bunch of CrossFit affiliate owners out to some wine and dine, basically like a schmoozing kind of like just, Hey, we're here for you. You know, CrossFit's blossoming in Europe and like we're coming over and we're just, you know, just smoozing and Sevon had like a, a, a film that he was producing in a film festival that happened to be in the same city at the same time and so they were like oh we'll go to the, we'll take these guys to the film festival and uh, something happened they couldn't go on the trip so Sevon calls me up he goes hey I need a favor and I'm like what's up He's like, um, do you want to, I said the, he basically told me their trip got canceled, but there's like eight CrossFit affiliates in Amsterdam that are basically going to have a, they have a reservation to have like a big dinner party the next, the next, like the next night. 
I mean, this was less than like 24 hours. And he's like, and this has nothing to do with media. This has nothing to do with the editing. You know, he's just my boss. And he's like, would you go, would you fly to Amsterdam in, in lieu of Greg Glassman and myself and basically take these people out to dinner? And I was like, uh, like when? He's like, you'd have to get on the flight like uh, right now. I was like, ah, bah, 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 uh, um, I guess I'll hold on a second. I put down the phone. I was like, hey, uh, this is not my current wife, ex-wife. I was like, hey, Anissa, uh, Seva Matosin is asking me if I want to uh, fly to Amsterdam like right now. Like I'd have to leave for the airport like right this second. And she's like, bah, 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 what? And I'm like, I, dude, I don't know any details. They're just telling me I have to like go to the airport right now in order to get this dinner. Uh, okay. So anyways, I pack a bag. I head to the airport. I get on this airplane. I fly to Amsterdam. I'm booked. I'm booked in the nicest hotel not just the nicest hotel, but the most fancy hotel on this little waterway in Amsterdam, but the like presidential suite, like the whole shebang. I checked in for for like three days. I'm checked in. They're saying, "Hey, Mr. Glassman, welcome back, Mr. Glassman." It's so crazy. <laughs> It was such a crazy experience. That's the kind of job that, like, that's the boss that I had. And so I get, to, dude, I get to take these guys out to dinner. Like, I don't know. It's like a $2,500 dinner. Fancy wine. This is crazy, dude. I, I remember I ordered room service at, like, every other meal. It was like... 200 yeah they're like uh the order what, the bill doesn't matter i think i had like the biggest steak at like two or at least two times a day i had steak like seven times on that few day trip it was crazy i mean how many people have an experience like this the ceo of a hundred million dollar company calls you up i mean Obviously, Sevon gave him, or Greg the, gave Sevon the permission to call me up. But anyways, the point is, they send you instead to go schmooze and wine and dine and like make these CrossFit affiliates feel good about themselves or good about the relationship between HQ. And it was like, I'm staying in the daggone presidential suite. I literally, I kept the receipt. When I checked out, I was like, I kept the receipt. I was like, I, I never ever in my life going to see this kind of money of what it costs for those three days here? It's crazy. Thousands of dollars. Anyways, that was my job at CrossFit. That those kind of experiences happened. Like, that was the craziest one, but multiple times cool shit happened to me due to working for CrossFit. And here, when I got let go from CrossFit, within a few months, I was working shitty corporate gigs with guys who would tell you they want something then tell you when you delivered it that that looks like shit. That's not what I asked you for. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And then working Instacart and I got on the app WAG and it was like, dude, this was my life, bro. I met this woman, I fell in love, and she's like, doing well for herself, but like, my shit was a mess. I mean, my shit was a big mess, a big mess. And uh, I mean, I'm just lucky this girl went on a date with me, to be honest, like, anyways. Point is, married in love, and, uh, uh, I'm talking to Peter Milano. I think I've told this story before, but he's like, hey, you should share that shit on Facebook. I mean, on YouTube. All of your content. It never once occurred to me at all that I should share that, that I would. 
I was like, I, I always dreamed of like bringing Arm TV back to life, but like becoming a YouTuber, I hated YouTube. YouTube put me out of business, I hated it. Anyways, it's like the craziest thing. And the reason I brought this up, because when I started the YouTube account, it was like popping. And my wife, she was, she really liked CrossFit because that community was awesome. It was a great job. And it's like, it's, yeah, it comes a little level of respectability working for CrossFit Media. And when we met and I told her I'd done arm wrestling in the past and I described all of my experiences with arm TV, you know, how do I put this? Throughout the years, I never once, never, I experienced the first one month, uh, first wife, the perfect example, a better example, because I was like, I mean, I'd say my wife at the time, she thinks of RMTV more as like a hobby, like, you're not paying the bills yet. This is your like hobby slash passion project. Not necessarily. I mean, it's like, is this what you do for a living? Like, I mean, have we gotten there? It's like I'm uh, devoting a lot of time to it. Can I say it's like a business yet? I mean. When YouTube's cutting you a check for 1600 bucks, it's like, I'm not really adding up my hours. So I don't know if it's like minimum wage or, I don't know what it is, but I'd say if I added up the hours since I've been back into RMTV, for a year and a half, it has to be, it has to be below minimum wage, I would think, which is normal. Like if you're gonna build a business, you expect that you're not going to make anything in the in the you know the first few years or whatever. But you know, your wife says something like, "Good, how long would you do that at a at a loss? Like, how many years will you like?" And I'm like, "Well, dude, I'm not going back to corporate work. Fuck no." Part. Sorry, Oliver. I am not taking another corporate job. No, 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 no. Working for CrossFit was awesome, but like I said, Sevon gave me too much freedom. I like, I do need to be wrangled in. I could get lost. I love filming. I love filming. I love interviewing. Editing is more of a struggle. If I keep it, keep it simple, I'm good. But when I try to get too complicated, like I'm working on, speaking of John Brzezink, I know we're getting off, we're, this, this, is there a point to the story? I don't know, bro, but uh, uh, I got the, the pulling John like behind the scenes, and I don't know if it's a full documentary, it's like an hour and something, but it's like, I'm trying to do a really good job with it, and it's like, it's ended up taking me too long, it's like, dude, just finish. Like, no one's gonna say, oh, that was worth waiting what, how long did you edit it? And I ended up putting it aside because I'm not in love with this or that. Point is, uh, back to the previous relationship. She used to say, you know, I hate telling people what you do. And I said, what do you mean? She's like, I'm embarrassed. I'm em this is the previous one. I'm embarrassed to tell people you film arm wrestling for a living, like that's your job. And I'm like, why would you be embarrassed? It literally is the coolest job in the world. I mean, honestly, on TV was the coolest job in the world. Uh, the only people who didn't think so were my family because they didn't like that I left so many weekends. But I was like, hey man, this is like, I'm trying to provide for the family. This is how I do it. And no one, no matter how many Craigslist people I find at 175 bucks, they are not going to do. They are not going to do the job that I would do. You know, that 
They're not gonna run to the different tables. They're not gonna try to get every sound bite humanly possible with just one camera or whatever. You know, they're just not gonna do that shit. And then to ask for multiple cameras or multiple people, it's like, not happening. Anyways, why did I tell this story? I don't know why I told this story. Maybe because when YouTube was popping, and I get excited, I get real excited, and I was like, oh my God, we're gonna have 100,000 followers. It's crazy. Uh, of course that shit didn't happen. What happens? Plateau. I'm convinced that like, if anything in life, that uh, you know, nothing comes easy. You will not find success until you wanna quit multiple times. And then, it's still not gonna come. And success only truly comes to the people who still don't give up. Like I'm convinced that that's how it work, works. So it kind of puts you in this like catch 22. Like will RMTV be a flourishing business at some point where I can get back to the old days where I had a, hired a film crew for five different events? Or is it like a part-time side hustle gig that the spouse is like, yeah, you know, I'm not gonna really take it 100% seriously until like started to, uh, you know, pay for bills and shit. She's very sweet about it. She's very supportive. She wants, you know, she loves that I'm, I'm, I'm having fun doing it. But just like the whole like, hey, this is your business. I don't know if we've quite got to that point. Anyways, I guess that's why I told that whole story. I don't know. Uh, are you commenting? I don't see any comments. Say something. We are Lex. I am 13 miles from Lexington and 70 miles from North Platte. Does anyone know where that is? I have no idea. And I, because I'm in chat with you bitches, I don't know what state I'm in. I may be still in Nebraska, I have no idea. And I have a dog who farts down here. Uh, so, type yes, is is Armour's live feed up right now? Can I watch it if I pull over and took a break and shut this down? Is that up? I hope you Arm TV fanatical nation goers enjoyed my story. I've told it a couple different times. But, uh, you know, the thing, so there were many times uh, that I chose arm wrestling over family. My daughter, uh, I think she hates arm wrestling because many times I, like, there's uh, the, um, uh, USAA Nationals, uh, Biltmore, Tahoe. It was always on the same weekend as my daughter's birthday. Leonard Harkless and he swallows. Amazing. Like, it just the vibe of arm wrestling in Tahoe. Something about, I don't know what it, I can't describe to you. The morning fresh air, the trees, the mountain, you know, just the mountain vibe and then all your buddies meeting up at this hotel it's like when, it's really one of those things where there's not a ton of, to do so everyone kind of sticks around it's almost if I were to give any advice to promoters those are the best tournaments anyone who wants let's say you're out there you're watching this you're like I want to be uh, I want to be an arm wrestling promoter and I want to put on a cool tournament. The most special tournaments, the ones that I have memories of, are the ones that have been in locations that kind of make it where you can't go anywhere else. And you're all, and then the, that's over a couple of days and you're forced to just hang out with your homies. Those have been the like most memorable ones that I can think of. In Tahoe, was one of those ones. Just the whole, whole uh, difficult to get to. Ask Vazgen. Vazgen Sagoyan 
and I, uh, we went on a road trip one time with Leach, and we were driving from Southern California, and I think we took a wrong turn, and we ended up going the wrong side of the mountains, and it took like, I mean, wait, was that Hawthorne? Ooh, that might have been Hawthorne, not Tahoe. That was Hawthorne, Nevada, I think. We went out the wrong side of the mountains. We added like six hours to our road trip unnecessarily. Uh, I think Basim is not happy about it. I can't remember. I think we ended up laughing it off, but it still was a good time hanging out with my homies. Anyways, getting back to uh, Tahoe a bit more. It was always my daughter's birthday weekend, and um, she was pissed that I would either leave town on her weekend of her birthday or I would take them to Tahoe. And she's like, I don't want to spend my birthday in Lake Tahoe with a bunch of arm wrestlers. No disrespect, Dad, but that's not how I want to spend my birthday. And it's like, I always played the card like, hey, this is what... Uh, puts the food on the table so uh, suck it up and I think in the end like had I really like hit it out of the park and now Arm TV was you know multi-million you know conglomerate with you know a hundred staff members and arm wrestling was mainstream because of what we did and you know my daughter was living the high life you know in the penthouse, she'd probably been like, oh, I love armors. But that never happened. And so the, if the look back, like, hey, my dad picked arm wrestling over the family, and that pissed me off. And so this time around, I love arm wrestling, but I'm taking a more chillaxed approach. I have the content. I'm not, there's so many content providers, so it's not like it was back in the day where like, if I miss something, then there's no footage of it. So I'm just more chillaxed regarding like the goal. Like I'm, I wanna be at events, I want to film events, I want to host events, I want to see all my, my homies, but I, I'm, I'm being more mature about the whole, you know, you know, picking arm wrestling over family, if you will. And given the fact that, you know, my, you know, that when I started arm wrestling, uh, my daughter was seven or eight. So she was already old enough to, you know, be able to have conversations and know that, hey, dad is always gone or going to tournaments so this one's different I have a little boy and then a girl coming along it's like you know I want to be more balanced if you will balance is key right peeps I want to be more balanced on how uh, how I take this and it's like I do I have expectations I think I do everyone wants to you know, I mean, I, I'm having so much fun. Do I have expectations? Uh, you know, I of course would like my wife to think of it as a legitimate business versus, us, you know, just uh, podcasting for fun and you know, side side gig, you know, fun money, but. You know, we'll see. I mean, I. We'll see. 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 Anyways, have I missed anything? Okay, it's time for an update. I've been live for 85 minutes. Have I missed anything in the world of arm wrestling while I've been driving? Type yes if I've missed something. Missed some cool arm wars action or if I missed anything in Texas. Although Texas is probably still in weigh-in mode, right? Type yes for missed or no for not missed. Give me, type something. No, I haven't missed anything? Oh, snap. 
All right, all right. Thank you for my journalists out there. My journalists. They told me my uh, my battery is low. So let me see. Is there any other interesting stories I have yet to tell? Is there anything I haven't told you guys? Ask somebody. Ask me a question. There's no cars around. Ask me a question. I'll answer. It. First question that pops up, I'll answer that shit. You missed singing in the shower? Gary, you have. When did you start watching and liking Arm? Alrighty then, I will tell this story. Thank you very much for perking me up. Okay, it's cliche. It's cliche. But I watched over the top as a kid. I loved it. But I thought it was fake. I thought it was... Okay, listen, man, it smells like this dog shit in my car. Dude, why do you smell so bad? Are you farting? Oh my god. I always forget, fiction or non-fiction, which one is fake? Fiction is real. Non-fiction Right? Damn it! I was getting backwards. What's. I'm like dyslexic when it comes to fiction and nonfiction. Whatever one is not real. You know, stories. I love story time. I love made up shit. Love science fiction. Aliens. Favorite movie of all, all time. James Cameron. That shit's made up. There's no aliens. There's no LV420 whatever with the freaking lost girl and they're sending the freaking gunship there to that shit ain't real, right? Sylvester Sloan and over the top, I thought that shit was made up. These are just facts. When I was a kid, I thought that was made up. Now, put two and two together, I obviously I had this friend, Brandon Beardsley. We were similar size, but we arm wrestled one time and he just destroyed me. And I was like, how, you're like the same size as me. Like, how did, how did you beat me so poorly? Like, I don't get it. But that was like my scope of arm wrestling. My best friend, Brandon, beating my ass and I couldn't figure it out high when we just looked very similar. And then watching over the top, I thought that shit was not real. Fiction or not fiction, whichever one was the not real one. So, it is Father's Day weekend 2003. Uh, I was a waiter and I was supposed to work waiting tables at Il Fornaio in Del Mar, California. Kind of a little fancy Italian place. I made pretty decent money. Uh, I, before on TV, I, I survived entirely off tips. I waited while I was edit, trying to get into the wedding business, I worked at the Four Seasons and I worked at El Fernayo. And when I didn't have a wedding gig, I worked, all my money came in on the weekends and I worked, I think my, yeah, yeah. So I worked overnights too during that time. So I would go work at the restaurant at 4 p.m. Friday I'd work Friday night, then 11 o'clock, I'd get off, I'd go work overnights at the Four Seasons, I'd work uh, till 7 a.m. Saturday morning, then I'd go home and I'd sleep as much as possible, get up at four, go back to the restaurant, and I'd work four to like 11, again, tips, then I'd go, uh, I'd go home, I'd go to the, and work again, I'd work all night Sunday, and. So by Monday morning, I'd done nothing but work, wait tables, run valet cars, or carry people's luggage, or sleep. I did nothing. This also contributed to the fact that, like, my family thought that all I did was work. Anyways, my wife at the time, she worked at the same restaurant as I did. And she said she was going to go to this festival, this bluegrass, this... Huck Finn Festival in Victorville, California. 
there was a long running tournament there by Randy Sampius. Look him up on Facebook. Uh, he really did a lot for the sport of arm wrestling back in the day, running the World Amateur Buena Park. And uh, good dude. Anyways, my wife at the time, ex wife, she came in and she said, Hey, I'm working your shift at the restaurant. You need to take the shift off at the uh, Four Seasons and you're gonna go spend the day with my dad for Father's Day. And I was like, you're gonna do that for me? So normally I'd work like 72 straight hours and she was like, oh, for Father's Day, I'm taking your shift and you take the day off. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is like the sweetest thing ever. Thank you very much. So I drove two hours north to Victorville. I hung out with my father-in-law, Dominic Lefort. And we're listening to some music, got the kid there and you know, good times and so between the music they announced hey uh, be sure to go check out the arm wrestling tournament on the backstage and I was like arm wrestling tournament what the heck what's, what's an arm wrestling tournament like arm wrestling and I just immediately thought of over the top of course so I turned to my out oh, now how back then as I wanted to get better editing, I filmed everything I could. I just filmed random shit and I just made, you know. The beauty of video editing is that literally is just practice. I mean, you just, if you want to get better as an editor, you just got to do it. Just like arm wrestling. You can't improve in arm wrestling unless you arm wrestling. Video editing, same thing, okay? You got to edit. And so, I didn't go to like film school or anything, so I would go to like Barnes and Noble, I'd read film books, and then I'd go film stuff. Well, because I was filming weddings, and weddings are like a lovey-dovey, everything slowed down, Celine Dion, my heart would go on, bitches. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if it's the internet or my phone dying. Anyways, the charger is now pulling, because it's a short cable, it's pulling my phone down. Anyways. At that moment, I was just trying to film any random thing. Like, I filmed some really everything I could. I always had my camera. So I turned to my father-in-law and I said, Hey, do you mind if I go check out this arm wrestling thing? And uh, he's like, of course. So you got the kid. So anyways, I go back there. And uh, I so I was filming it. And I was like, oh, this is crazy. What's going on here? It was one table. Uh, Huck Finn Festival, you know, hot Sunday afternoon, Father's Day, blue skies, trees everywhere, park atmosphere, wood stage, really low to the ground, the kind of stage that just is always there, just, and, uh, you know, people out, and uh, it's, I think it's kind of like a campground environment, I can't remember, the, like, campers around, but most people have their, like, coolers and their little beach chairs, trying to get a little shade from the trees and everyone like drinking beers and uh, you know I just thought oh man this is so cool and of course I just kept thinking about over the top and uh, I remember uh, Harold Ryden's wife Melanie Ryden she was standing in the back uh, of the stage and she's like you can get closer if you want like she saw me filming but I was kind of like keeping my distance. Didn't want to be, didn't want to be rude or nothing. She's like, no, go up there. If you want, you're fine. And I was like, you sure? She's like, yeah. And uh, she was pregnant, with like with the big belly, one of their children, uh, Cole, Cole riding, still in the belly. So whenever you see how old Cole is, that's exactly how, uh, old arm TV is um, so I get I get closer of course you know I like to be in the action and uh, I didn't know at the time but her husband Harold Ryden who was originally from Minnesota like he has the Minnesota arms jacket and um, I remember you know when you look at Harold like on close inspection of Harold Ryden if you look at his hands He's got like huge hands. And you think to yourself, 
obviously this guy's an arm wrestler. Like the hands, his fingers, his hands are so long. It's like genetically just, of course, you're an arm wrestler. But from not so close, you can just look at him, kind of lanky, he, uh, thinner, tall, tall, I mean, same height as me, but um, I was overweight and he wasn't, so it looked, looked, looked like tall and thin to me. He was wearing like a, a tank top and I wouldn't say he looked like he had guns, it just looked like, I mean, I mean it looked fit, but the arms weren't like, let's say, impressive. Just looked like a fit, normal dude. But walking down the road, you wouldn't think, oh my gosh, this is like intimidating, this guy. Anyways, so they call him up, and then they call up this guy, Joe. I don't know his last name. Apparently, he was like MMA guy. Harold knows him. But he was shorter, stockier. I do believe, and I have this video, and I think it's on the channel. You'd have to search for it little bit older but he had like uh, you know he had God damn it he had a I'm not saying it was like the Terminator or something but he did I remember he had like kind of neck muscles and his arms were bulgier and I, maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit if you think of like a he-man action figure you know if you compare like Harold he looked tall and skinny and this guy looked bulkier but not like extreme just more intimidating and I thought to myself oh the skinny dude's gonna get whacked of course there's no shot this guy Harold has no shot so they go up and the Harold flashes him flash bam and I was like oh whoa 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 and really right away I just thought to myself Ooh, I can't wait to edit this. Like, I just totally was shocked. You know, anything, when you're shocked, it's obviously leaves an impression. And uh, Harold ended up winning, like, his classes. I don't think he took a loss. And I just couldn't wait to go home and put his matches together to, like, some cool music. I ended up using Gladiator fight music. Uh, first, uh, Gladiator, the very first battle, that cool music. It's like really awesome music you guys know what it is you know what I'm talking about anyway so when the tournament was over I was I gave my business card it wasn't arm TV it was just I used to have a real editing.com r-e-e-l I'm sad and I let it expire someone stole it from me because I didn't renew it and I was putting all my home movies on you know it was it was on my own website there was no YouTube at the point I was putting home movies and anything I was editing I was putting up there and uh, you know it was ahead of my time ahead of my time bitches at the you know honestly when you know when I started getting into weddings I thought it makes so much sense that I would be able to send somebody an example of my work over the internet instead of having to go and meet face to face and give them a DVD or a VHS tape I was like it makes sense that I would send video but I mean we were still just breaking into the non dial up like it was when I met Harold and we talked about arm wrestling he's like all arm wrestling websites are are pictures like, can you imagine? Like, you guys are so spoiled, dude. You imagine a world, you click on YouTube, and it's just hours and hours of video and content, and just arm wrestling matches galore. When I got into the sport of arm wrestling, fruitcakes, imagine this. No video. Pictures. Just imagine that for a second. There was no main website. There was no Facebook. There was no YouTube. You would go to a website worldofarmwrestling.com and there would just be pictures pictures after pictures after pictures after pictures two videos that I witnessed at that time Mike West Midwest Arms he was filming arm wrestling Scott McInnes was filming arm wrestling too but I don't remember seeing his uh, web page or anything but he was filming and getting content Mike West was filming Pulling John had just they didn't even there was no pulling John that day 
because Sevan Matosian was finding arm wrestling at a Bill Collins tournament on the very same weekend in Northern California where he met Simon Barachoa. So he hadn't even launched pulling John yet. But that day, I couldn't find no videos. And Harold pointed me to all the websites and he's like, hey, it's the largest underground sport in the world, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, what? And I just, if you read business books, if you wanna be successful in business, find a need and fill it. Find a need and fill it. Find a need and fill it. It's a very simple concept. I was trying to be a wedding videographer at the time. People need wedding videographers, but there's no drought in people filling it. Thousands, and in San Diego alone, I mean, the amount of people I was competing with who were legitimately way better than I was and already in the field, like, find a need and fill it. It's already being filled. Like, you're just trying to sneak in there and it's like difficult with arm wrestling nobody was filming arm wrestling like on a world level scale like nobody was doing it and I just thought oh another thing I learned from business book, a business book the person who's first has the greatest chances of success so I was like do I want to uh, continue looking for uh, wedding clients when there's already hundreds of competitors or I start following arm wrestlers well here's the deal uh, nothing came of it uh, I met Harold it was awesome he was so cool he actually called me up a few days later said he checked out my website and I said oh I'm just uploading the clip and he watched it and he said, nobody does this. Nobody's putting clips up. And uh, I, you know, I was a really early adopter. Because nobody was streaming videos, I was experimenting with all the different ways of trying to figure out how to stream video. Like streaming, the word streaming did not exist when I was uploading arm wrestling videos to my personal website. Anyways. I went to Harold's house, I met Alan Fisher, I met Jeremy Plaster. Uh, speaking of, a couple days later, Alan Fisher calls me up, he's like, hey man, I'm in, uh, I'm in uh, your neck of the woods. He came over and he's like, I got this product, it's called Juice Plus. You wanna hear about it? I was like, I'm like hey, I'm in no, I'm in no uh, position to be, I'm like, dude, I, I wait tables, I work at a hotel, I do film weddings on the side, and now there's this idea of arm wrestling. It's like, uh, like I, I can't, I can't involve in uh, Juice Plus. Sorry, sorry, sorry. But you're awesome. So, anyways, the arm wrestling thing kind of faded out a little bit, and it was like, it was one of those things. Do you guys ever have an amazing idea? Everyone has an amazing idea. Uh, you wake up, you're like, I got the greatest idea in the world. We all have them. And then you don't do anything. Like, and you think back and you're like, you see someone that has uh, done something great or you hear somebody invented something and you're like, why didn't I think about that? And then you recall back that, that time that you had a great idea and you never did anything. Arm wrestling was almost that. I, I almost never did anything. It's like, oh, it was awesome. The, 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 the thought of, of getting on airplanes and traveling around the world and filming arm wrestling, at no point did I have any confidence or think that that could actually ever happen. It was like, uh, it was gonna, it was literally gonna fade away. I was so busy in my other jobs that it was gonna fade away. Okay. Well, fast forward like, I'm guessing two months. Harold. The same lanky, tall, skinny with the big hand, Harold, that I was telling you about. You're still following along with this story. He called me up. Really, we all should just put a hashtag, thank you, Harold, because if Harold Bryden does not call me up and invite me to Laughlin, Nevada, to go to another Lennon, another USAA event, which is where I ended up meeting John Brzezinski, 
if he doesn't call me up th that day, there's no RMTP. Just not enough. Someone posted a link. Whose link is it? John Channel, John Berzank. Share and like and subscribe to the greatest arm wrestler of all time, who's now a YouTuber. Anyways, you know, life is funny, man. Life is, uh, works in really funny ways, okay? So I would, the thought of filming tournaments was awesome. Jeremy Plaster said, oh, I would pay you, but he never called me back and said, okay, I'm a tournament, I'll pay you to come. It was like, it just was starting to fade away. You know, starting to become one of those things was like, it was a good idea, but I don't know, I don't know how that would happen. Anyways, he calls me up. He's like, dude, I'm getting ready to go to a tournament. He's like, do you want to come with me? And I was like, like where? He's like, Laughlin, Nevada. I think it's like a six hour drive or something. He's like, you're welcome to join. I, I'm like, hold on a second. So, got permission from the missus. Here's what I did. I didn't have any money. But I had a credit card that had like uh, $1,100 $1 $1 credit line on it. And I don't think I'd used it yet. I'm like, brand new. I go to, I go to Walmart and I buy a Sony Bio laptop. And this bitch was thick. It was like 30 pounds. It's the heaviest laptop I'd ever, I did. I did not own a laptop at the time. My stepdad is a programmer. All my computers at that, that time had been hand-me-downs from him. He always built his computers. And a little shout out to him. Uh, video editing couldn't have been possible had he not given me all my computers. Because I was basically, you know, struggling. We had a young child, waiting tables, living off tips. Tips are unreliable, you know, uh, struggling. And I was going to college at that time, part-time. I was uh, gotten down the ring course. I was using the GI Bill to go to college. Full boat, everything paid for. Uh, I'm 20% disabled Marine. I hurt my knee in training and uh, in my ear. One time I was firing some rifles in a range, and but we couldn't stop. We were being go to target to target to target. My ear plug fell out, but I I didn't want to get a bad score, so I kept uh, I kept popping away and literally like busted my ear so 10% disabled for my leg and my ear uh, so they paid everything for school at that time so I was I forgot not just waiting tables for season going to school and now here going filming a, a tournament with some wild dream with this cool guy Harold Ryan that I just met so the whole thing was that I was gonna buy this laptop I brought the DVD of the Victorville tournament where Harold is whacking the MMA guy to gladiator music. I made a five minute trailer and uh, I was gonna walk on, I did. I walked around the audience of this tournament with uh, my laptop open, it was in my arm. And the whole thing was, I, re, I was planning on returning it. I did return it. I, I got it so I could play the DVD at the tournament and then I was gonna return it because I couldn't afford to buy this laptop. So, I uh, drive, and again, I'm driving to Laughlin, Nevada with a guy I barely know, Harold Wright, but he's like the coolest dude. I'm like, this is so weird. Just ran, I meet this random guy, he ends up being like the most nice guy of all time. He's telling me, that, again, he's like filling me in on all the behind the scenes of arm wrestling. And my entire first education on the sport of arm wrestling happened on that road trip uh, that day. And so I go there and it's like, see that guy over there? He's like, that's John Brzenk. He's the greatest arm wrestler of all time. And I look at John Brzenk and I'm like, I don't get it. How is the greatest of all time? Like, I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm a nice looking guy. But I'm like, I don't, I don't see how he's the best arm wrestler of all time. So he, John Brzezink does his thing and he, you know, whacks everyone there. But it's like, that still doesn't tell me why John Brzezink is the greatest arm wrestler of all time. So I'm just so naive and dumb and I don't know anything, right? So 
the thing about that tournament is there's two two broken arms at that tournament. Let me tell you, when an arm breaks at a tournament and they were only running one table, you could feel all of the energy leave. Like, and I was like, oh shit, this is like serious. I mean, not only is over the top freaking real, but shit's arm, arms are getting snapped off up in this bitch. Like, this is really scary. So I'm filming it and I'm like, oh, it's crazy. So do her thing. I go home, I put a trailer together, I put it on DVD. Uh, the next uh, part is Harold Ryan says, you got to meet Dave Devoto. He's like, Dave Devoto is the godfather of arm wrestling. I was like, okay, well, you know, so then that's when they get into Petaluma and Bada Bada. And he's like, you know, he's the, him and Bill Sopranos, they were the originators of the sport of arm wrestling. And uh, so he connects us. So I called Dave Devoto and I like, Dave Devoto was like 70, 72 or 73 at the time. And uh, Dave Devoto tells me, he says, I have the largest collection of arm wrestling videos. The archive that I'll share with you. If you'd like, we launched the site together. I'd share, I'd share those with you. And I was like, so the concept of me filming tournaments suddenly became like real. And then I meet the founder of arm wrestling who literally started it all. It was wrist, 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 wrist wrestling, but you know what we're talking about. And he's like, yeah, I have all the reels. I'll share it with you. And uh, so we go and we meet. And uh, like, you know, the concept is born. He's like, yeah, well, this I, meeting Dave Devoto gave me the confidence that we could do this. And he also purchased the first camera I ever had. He called up like two days after, two days after we meet. Um, two days after we meet he calls up Sevan Matosian he says what kind of camera are you using for filming Pulling John and uh, Sevan's like a Sony PD150 and he's boom he ordered it he bought the same camera shipped it to me and he bought my ticket to the world championships 2003 at, in Canada where Travis Bajan whacked um, <laughs> Alexi Vavoda. Oh my gosh, I almost brain farted there for a second. So, literally, I the thought of like getting on an airplane, leaving the country to film like the world championships was like so scary. And, uh, anyways, little did I know that a long time recurring thing would happen when I show up at a WAF World Championships. This is the very first day they say, no way can you get on the stage. And Dave Devoto's like, let me let me talk to some peeps. Finally, they got uh, me on stage access. So I filmed the World Championships. I came over, I came home. I immediately, so at that time, I was, uh, my personal website, I taught myself HTML. Everything I've ever done in my life has been like self-taught. Taught myself HTML, how to post a website, how to stream videos. And uh, so I created the backbone of the original ARM TV website. I designed all that shit from scratch myself. And uh, I started loading up. I began with the World Championships and I had the beginning archive of the footage that uh, Dave Devoto shared with me. So I remember January 20th, 2004. If you go to myarmtv.com, does it say 20th or 28th? I always get that wrong. I think it's 20th. At the bottom of the website, it says January 20th is the day Arm TV Change the world of arm wrestling. And you know, I wanted something profound. Uh, I think I gotta take this down. No, no, you shouldn't have to pee already. The day arm TV changed the world. And I 
and I launched the website and it okay follow me in how many people we got this is crazy this is crazy 46 people so I launched the website okay like the triple A's board and it's like dude you didn't have many places to share share back then giving this guy a little treat and I had within 24 within like 48 hours I had a hundred and thirty eight people sign up and they were paying I had three months it was eighteen dollars for three months for some reason I just knew that like we got to build so I can't just do a month I can't do a month like if you're gonna sign up for on TV you gotta commit you gotta commit for three months so six dollars a month and I had 138 people sign up. And I was like, holy shit. This is like, wow, people just gave me money for arm wrest to watch arm wrestling videos behind a paywall. And I put the DVD to the World Championships. It's $20 a DVD. People were buying the DVDs. I was ripping the DVDs and shipping them out, which I hated hated making DVDs in fact I hated making DVDs so much because four out of ten crashed probably 50% of the DVDs I sold the guys would email me tell me they're not playing and the player and I swear to you this is true nobody was talking about this shit I said everyone I told my family I said dude this is not a, I mean, I don't have the money to pay real companies to produce DVDs, like legitimately. And I said, I cannot wait for the day when you can just click and download a movie. Just everything should just be streamable. The days of holding on and buying the actual disc I cannot wait till that is over. It was such a scarring experience trying to sell DVDs that I I knew. I said the future is not this. Download only, streaming only. Like I knew it, man. Uh, Netflix, Netflix was shipping you DVDs. I knew Netflix. I'm like, they'll be streaming. They'll be streaming movies. Like, dude, I'm telling you, it wasn't just early in arm wrestling. I was early in all of it. I knew. Don't want to toot my own horn. First person I knew to cut my telephone line. I knew everyone just have cell phones. First person I knew to cut cable. I knew everyone just use the internet. I knew download was the key. So much so that before I started my business, when I, I wanted to be a financial planner at one time, I had a dream, I had a dream in 99 that I would take my entire 401k, I would take all of the money I had, I woke up, I had a dream that the largest fiber optic network in the world was going to make me was going to be how I, I got successful. And I opened up the newspaper and there's a business called Global Crossing. And they had the largest fiber optic network. And I said, that is the key. I'm investing every dollar I have into high speed internet. Every fucking dollar I had. I sold all of my stocks and I bought I bought in at 23, I bought in at 17, I bought in at 250, I bought in at 90 cents, and I was on a conference call with stockholders. Gary Winnick was on the conference call, and he said, if you're a secretary for this company, I promise you, this stock will never go below a dollar again. I, If I work for this company, I would dump all of my money into Global Crossing stock. 
and I dumped all of it. We're, we're talking, it, it totaled, I think, life savings of $40,000 over all the five different purchases into a, a Global Crossing, who then, during the dot-com bubble bursts, went bankrupt, and I lost everything. Now, I was ahead of my time there. Yes, high-speed internet was the way. Yes, they did have the largest fiber optic network, but like only 10% of the network was even being utilized, and they overpaid and went severely in debt to try to purchase this thing, and it was like, it was not sustainable. So I did not do my due diligence. Anyways, lost everything. Helped uh, make a man poor when he had a small baby. So, fast forward to Arm TV. One of the reasons why I wanted to work for myself is because I said never, never, never again will I put all my eggs in someone else's basket. I said, if I'm gonna be successful, I'm gonna put all my eggs in my basket. I'm the only one I can trust who can work hard. So, I went all in with Arm TV, and part of my falling out with Dave Devoto at the time was because, you know, this was not his, like, I, I mean, I went all in, and, like, we didn't have the same vision to where what that meant. And I was like, one one day I need to buy a hard drive, and he's like, mm, nah, we can't, we can't spend that kind of money. And I was like, what? Like, dude, I'm, I like, blah, blah, blah. And then... Uh, him and John Bergerson, they got TV contracts, and anyways, I was like, I guess I'm on my own. Like, no one, no one cares about Arm TV like, like I care about it. Like, I, I said, I'm, I am going all in everything I do, and so every decision I made for like 10 years, yes, put Arm TV first. Hurt family, blah blah blah. Uh, again, put in a situation where I invested everything I stopped saving money I didn't buy one more stock so where I was really good in my youth about like saving up the 40k even though I was only working for tips you know during arm TV I had no savings because every every dollar went to more footage more footage uh, in order to get more tournaments I would like I Neil pickup found out the last year that when I went to Arm Wars, I lived in my rental car because I didn't have the money for uh, a hotel. I didn't want to tell anybody. So I bummed rooms off people. Um, I always stayed at people's houses if I could. Like, uh, I mean, the things I did to try to stretch the almighty dollar, I mean, it above and beyond, bitches, above and beyond. I don't, I've yet to meet anyone who has uh, done the similar similar lengths of, uh, you know, sitting on a bus for 24 hours from California to Texas, going to the tournament, and then when the tournament's over, going back to the bus stop, sitting on the bus again, just so I could afford to buy the ticket to Connecticut. Crazy shit, crazy shit. Anyways, a uh, lifetime full of stories. And I think this dog's got to take a pee. I'm going to pull over. If I disappear for a few seconds, have I missed anything yet? Is arm wrestling rolling? Who's who's getting whacked? What's happening? Fill me in. Uh, if some of you, I've told these stories a few times, and if this is the second or third time you heard it, I apologize. But you know, we have, you know, some newer arm wrestlers just welcome to the biz. Uh, business of arm wrestling and maybe you don't know the backstory all right all right Oliver coming one mile one mile one mile bro uh, uh, should I'm gonna stand why not I'm gonna stand I need to be motivated I keep forgetting to drink my coffee Okay, so I've got to let this dog maybe go pee. I'll be stepping out of the car for a second. Um, pause for station identification. Is there, am I missing anything? Chat, come on, chat peeps, say something. Caroline Loomis, we put up the chat for you. Tell us what is going on in the sport of arm wrestling. Uh, 
Um, man, I wonder if I got any other stories. We're coming. Proceed about half of a mile to I-80 West. Okay, we're pulling up. Chat, I can see a chat. Hey, let's see a chat. Let's see a chat. Let's see a chat. Oh, uh, Wisconsin on our side. Jordan Lennon. What's up? Okay. 48 people. Hang out. Click like and subscribe. Hey, I've got $40 in super chats. You guys have helped pay for some gas money. Thank you. I'll be back in a minute. Again, if you're just tuning in, we got a long drive to Portland, Oregon. I'll be back. Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere on TV Nation. I need to know. Put in the chat. Give me something to know about. Dog, some agua. Sure, I'm looking after little Poochie. Okay, drink some water, bro. Drink some water, bro. Drink the water, dude. Okay, when is John Brzezink going? What have I missed? Come on, guys, hook me up. Help me stay awake here. What have I missed? Brzezink, unfortunately, smashed Paul. Is it over? Did Brzezink already pull? Damn, what's going on? Gary, arm wrestling women. Gary is happening, that's all. Oregon. Yeah, so. Uh, women have no chance with me, guys. Sorry, just. Like someone brought up Gabby last night. What I remember about Gabby is her hand was small compared to mine. So even though she might be really strong, like, you know, I don't feel intimidated that I can just pop that, you know. Uh, my dad is from, I was born in Oregon. All my family's in Oregon. And uh, my, with the passing of my, my wife's father, this past January and being involved in that process, it really got me a wake up call that like, hey, being, you know, my dad's getting older and I wanna, you know, I wanna be, I wanna be closer to him. And since I can work from home and my wife can work from home, it's like, you know, all my extended family is in Oregon. And, uh, you know, I just, it is, it would be a lot easier for me to build Arm TV from, uh, from Chicago, but you know, again, I'm trying to, if you've listened to the story, I'm trying to be balanced in my decision making for arm wrestling and not be so, uh, like, it, if you've been here at all, listen to all this backstory, you see that I was young, immature, and effing crazy with how I approached building the business of arm wrestling. Like, there was one time, I mean, I was, it almost led to divorce. Like, I was, it was bad. I was like, hey, arm wrestling pays the bills, so arm wrestling comes first above all else. And, uh, you know, the ex-wife at the time, she did, her ex-wife, she did not like to hear that. Nobody likes to hear that. Um, so anyways, playing smart, having fun. But, uh, you know, filming tournaments on a consistent basis is something I would love to do, but I wouldn't be able to do it at the capacity like one good tournament a month, probably is something I can do uh, long term. Uh, let's see, how far are we from? I'll be right back. Hold on. 1400. And have to be there by Sunday. Uh, thank you for all the super chats. Thank you for hanging out with us. 
uh, again, now this the whole concept is to create a chat log, you know, just chat. Is any other who else is live right now? Is Ar Armor's live? Anyone? Anyone? Tell me. Tell me. Someone asked me another question. Someone asked me how I got started in arm wrestling. I gave that answer. You know, the best thing, dude, I had, uh, so here's crazy. You guys, I'm effing crazy, okay? I had, because I'm a disabled veteran and you qualify for, uh, you know, I qualified for a, I feel like it's kind of taking advantage but it's like, hey, I qualified, so why not take it? Because I dislocated my leg in the Marine Corps and because my, my leg was disabled, and I did have, I mean, now in retrospect, I probably was just lacking good rehab. I, if I would have strengthened my leg muscles, I probably, the knee pain probably would have subsided. But basically when I went to VA, I was like, Hey, my knee hurts and I wait tables all day and run around with ballet cars. What what can you do? And they're like, we actually qualify for a program where we pay for your entire college. Everything. You imagine, think about it just a second. The entire college tuition paid for. Books, computer, paper, pencil, everything. I was in this program because I waited tables and had to stand on my legs, stand on my feet. The the military, the VA was paying for all of my schooling. Well, guess what? It was finals. I just filmed the world championships. It was the next year. It was finals, filmed the world championships. I was trying to edit that. I was trying to uh, study for finals. And I was like, I'm cracking. I cannot do it. I cannot go to school. I cannot try to build this arm wrestling business and wait tables, I was like, something's got to give. And I said, uh, I said to my wife at the time, I said, I'm going to quit school. And she goes, are you all listening? How many people are there? 41 people. She said, uh, are you listening? Come in. Let me tell you. So I said, uh, I'm going to quit school. And she said, uh, are you stupid? Like, you really must be stupid. You cannot, you're having a free education and you're gonna quit school for arm wrestling? She's like, you must be stupid. You must be stupid. She said, we had this serious conversation. <sighs> and I just said, I was trying to think the upside. I was trying to think of, uh, you know, what college would get me. And I was trying to think of what blowing up the largest underground sport in the world would get me. And I was like, this is a win-win. Now, when you're like, oh, you're just in it for the business. Like, Bleh. in the very first beginning, it was, it was a business. I had no idea. All the friends I'd meet, I had no idea how awesome it would be. Dude. I didn't know. I didn't think of arm wrestling as a community back then. Let me put this dog in. We got to hit the road again. You ready, bitches? Those early days, man, I was trying to put foot. I lost my entire life savings on uh, a, a gamble with Global Crossing. Gary Winnick, suck it, bitch. Dude, freaking dude. Laya. Google Gary Winnick and Global Crossing, bro. I was right in there. I was right in that story. Anyways, yeah, in the beginning, man, I was trying to put food on the table, dude. I had a kid. I was trying to figure out my future you know all I wanted was to be able to work hard and do something you love and get paid for it like who and we all want that right shit right so anyways in the beginning yeah I wasn't but I've always been the kind of guy that like I hear this story okay I read this story one time 
where this guy in a quarter um, of a mile straight onto I-80 West. Uh there's a story about a guy who owned a factory somewhere in the Midwest and uh like I can't remember the details now, but basically like he really took care of his employees and when he sold the company, he likes did it in a way that made sure that all straight ahead onto I eighty west. That he all the like lifelong employees like benefited. It was like everyone benefited from this uh this company's success and the sale of it. And I can always envision like that's I'd be that guy. You know, I wouldn't be the guy who ran like Walmart where I'm you know, half my I'm the largest employer in the country and half my employees have to like be on uh, you know benefits from the government like food stamps I was like I wouldn't be that kind of business owner I was like you know do I want to do well do I want to make money of course I do but I wanted to do it in a, like an awesome way where like everyone would benefit and shit I thought you know I want to be like Sevon was to me like the coolest boss in the world. That's the kind of boss I'd want to be. The awesome boss. The guy who, like took care of his peeps. So, you know, anyways, I appreciate you still being here. We have are up to 48 people to catch you up. You know, if you guys listen to the Uncle John uh, podcast with us on Tuesday nights, the on TV Colin show. I've basically been on record that for the last how many months I've been working on trying to get a house fixed up and sold and finally closed on September 15th. And so, uh, uh, Oregon. Now that's just where my peeps are. I've got family there, dad there, daughter there, cousins, like my mom's in Northern California, and my mom's like, well, why didn't you move back to California? And I would love to move back to Northern California. However, it's just not uh, very affordable in California. And I've been waiting for prices to come down, but because of the pandemic, they've only gone up higher. So, you know, Oregon it is. It would be harder to travel for arm wrestling, but, uh, you know, I'm excited to be around some of the Northern arm, uh, the Pacific Northwest arm wrestlers that I only was around like every once in a while back in the day. <sighs> Anyways, uh, ask another question. Somebody asked something. Come on. Uh, is there a bunch of fires in NorCal? Man, I don't know what it is with California and fires. Jesus. Hey, dog. What do you want? I took you out, bro. This dog is whining over something. I took him out, bro. So anyways, we're trying to transition. All of our stuff has been moved. Uh, big U-Haul truck took all of our stuff like a few weeks ago. So we've been living out of a hotel for uh, a few weeks now. And uh, now we're trying to get the cars uh, over there. Although, I do have some cool news. I kind of don't want to talk. So, my wife bought a camper van. And before we... So, when I go to... Uh, go to Oregon, drop out this car. Then I come back to Chicago. Then we're going to load everything up in the camper van. And we're going to do a trip to the East Coast for a little bit. Yeah, it's going to be limited time. And my wife did that because she wanted to visit her friends and introduce them to our bubby. And I'm gonna try to sneak in a couple arm wrestling things at the same time. So stay tuned. There's perhaps gonna be a little arm wrestling road trippy. So I'll be in the area over there. This one I can't pull over. But that one, I have a camper van. It's got a bed in it. It's awesome. It's got a pop top. So it sleeps for. It's pretty wicked. It's got a, a generator. It's what? Completely off grid. Totally cool. So 
we'll do a little and I don't know if you guys know, but I lived in the RV for a couple of years, so I've always been hashtag RV life, van life. I've been all been all about that business. So uh, my buddy Fletcher, he built a, uh, he's been building a camper van, and uh, he said like, oh, the Pacific Northwest, the market for like renting out your camper van, if you have one, is huge. And I was like, oh, that sounds like a cool business idea, and it would help offset the cost. So the whole idea is that we'll you know, use the camper van for this road trip and then put it on outdoorsy and see if we rent it out when we're not using it to help pay for itself. So that's the plan. Uh, I can't believe it. How is there nothing else in arm wrestling? Arm wars, give me some results, people. Come on now. Tell me something, Caroline. What's going on? Caroline. Loom, loom, listen, loomies or loomis, looms. Not to be uh, mixed up with my wife, Caroline. Um, uh, does anyone know when John Brzezink is arm wrestling? Dimitri. And will it be live? Gary is. I don't know how I got you as such a cool fan, Carol Carolyn, Caroline. But I appreciate you. It's awesome. Um Let me see if I have any other stories. There was this one time Tokyo, Japan, World Championships in Tokyo. I've never been to Tokyo, okay? So I get on an airplane. I go to Tokyo. Uh, I'm so excited to get the footage to Arm TV Nation that I don't do anything in Tokyo. I go to the venue, I go to the hotel, which the hotel was so small, you could stand in the room, you could put your, you could touch all the walls and if you're in the bathroom, it was like an RV bathroom. You could literally touch every wall you were in. It was so small. And I stayed in that room and I edited footage to share the footage every night of the tournament. And I think by the time the tournament was over, I'd, I think I edited and posted all the matches. I'm not 100% sure if... Uh, I successfully posted everything, but I did my best, and I think I got close. It really was a crowning achievement. On the final day, the entire team like got on a bus, and they went to Disneyland Tokyo, which my wife at the time, ex-wife now, went with them. I stayed in the hotel and edited. Listen, people, that's how dumb I am. I went to Tokyo, Japan, and I did nothing fun. I filmed arm wrestling and went back and worked so I could share the footage. Now you can understand why I'd be so annoyed at those who run WAF that I worked so hard to try to share and promote all year long trying to build up Team USA, trying to get people to go to the WAF World Championships. To then every year show up at the Worlds and be denied stage access hurt my feelings, I'll say. But I have this cool world trip in Tokyo where I did nothing. I did nothing. I didn't go anywhere. I think one time we went out to like a Tokyo dinner. I worked the entire trip. The entire trip. It's crazy. Now, if I were to go to Tokyo now I can't do that anymore. The ability to like stay up all night and edit and then go still go film, I I cannot do that. You know the sad thing about that is I can't find that footage. I think that hard drive that's one hard drive. So I'm a terrible business person, Arm TV Nation. Terrible with money. Uh, terrible with the organization of stuff. And, 
Over the years, I did not back up like I should have, and one of my hard drives crashed, and I lost that entire Tokyo footage. Can't find it. So, it's kind of a bummer. You know, the cool thing that I do remember from the Tokyo trip is I remember that was the first time I like bonded with Don Fritchie, our, who ended up being our sponsor. What year was Tokyo? Was it 2005? I can't remember what year Tokyo was. But I, I remember that's when I met Don Fritchie and like he cracked a joke or something. We were like all out to like breakfast before the event. And I was like, man, this guy is really an awesome dude. And I remember he always, he was one of the guys who always said to me, hey man, you'll make it. Don't quit. Don't quit. You'll make it. Just keep doing what you're doing. Just keep doing what you're doing. He like, he really inspired uh, confidence in me to, uh, to keep, you know, keep on trucking. Which makes it like, do you guys know Don Fritchie's? This guy, one day, I think it was another time, it was fast forward a couple years, and you know, I'm talking about my vision, what I like to do for arm wrestling, and he goes, I'll tell you what, Gary. He goes, you host your vision, your tournament, and I'll give you the $20,000 for the prize money. All you gotta do, I have one request. All you gotta do is have it in my town, Kansas City. Can you imagine? Dude, that's like the coolest thing. How many people just were like, hey man, you have vision? Here's 20K, do it. It's crazy, bro, it's crazy. Three years in a row, that man gained $60,000. I pride myself 100% to prize money. We did not use $1 of that to, to go towards running of the event. All the entry fees covered, uh, it was like the perfect, beautiful thing. You had to be a member of Arm TV, so that's how I got my cut. All the athletes had to be members. You had to pay your 20, 20 bucks. That's all I wanted, just be a member. Then the entry fee, yes, we're taking your entry fee, but it's 100% going towards the cost of the event. That means your entry fee covers the lights, the venue, the ref, Whatever, t-shirts, uh, Karen Bean for the brackets. It's perfect. Then sponsor, prize money. Sponsor can stand up and say, 100% of my money is going right back to the armors. It was like, again, to come back full circle, hey, I feel like, you know, if I get my way and I do cool shit in arm wrestling, then we're gonna do it right. Like, it's gonna be legit. You're gonna be proud to be like, hey, that guy's doing cool shit. Not trying to just, you know, milk it. You know what I mean? <sighs> so, tell him that the sponsor, Don Fritchie. Uh, what other story do I got? What other story do I got? Ask questions. Somebody put in the chat. Say something. Say something. So, is Arm Wars live? Help me out. Is anyone posted? Is uh, have all you guys watched uh, Uncle John? I'm really impressed with Uncle John, right handed. Holy buckets! Damn, that was impressive, Uncle John. Well done. This has given me far more confidence in your left hand in my my stakings. And I was really, John, uh, Uncle John said he was going to bring the intensity. The, the, it still says it like he's a character. I mean, I don't necessarily know it needs to be a character. You're just bringing energy, talking shit. That's, you know, I mean, it's fun. Okay. Uh, uh, dude. Give me a story about your favorite event ever. 
Okay, 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 okay. Listen, guys. Facts. Again, come full circle. I already told you about the parameters of what made uh, Michael Bowling. Is he still around? Mike Bowling? You guys know him? remember the town in Ohio that the Harley pole was at. Yeah, I'm rough, bro. I look rough. Damn straight. Look rough. Listen, I couldn't sleep last night. I pulled over to go to sleep and this dog snored all night. Kept me up. I should be well rested. But it kept me up and then I had to watch Uncle John Armistel at 5 a.m. in the morning. So I'm rough partially because of this Snoring dog and Uncle John. The Harley pole. Man, what somebody posted the town that that was in? Like a little, it was just one freeway stop. And it's almost like once you're there, why go anywhere else? And the the venue, the kind of the atrium, all the rooms were around the indoor atrium, and so the tables were all right there in the middle and you literally could walk out of your room and look down and there'd be arm wrestling it was really a cool a cool gig and uh i mean there's something attractive about the harley giveaway it's like it's just a cool thing i mean you win first, you get three keys. You win second, you get two keys. You win third, you get a key. Uh, there's there's a clip on Arm TV. I'm I'm surprised it hasn't gone viral. I'm surprised it didn't go viral. But John Brzezink like like wrestling. It's on. I posted like ten years ago. It's on the channel. Someone should find it. Like click John Brzezink wrestling Harley Pull. But it was like the after party. Hang. The arm wrestling was awesome. Anybody who was anybody was there. So it was like, everyone who was awesome is at that tournament. You're stuck there. All the rooms you can see are right there. It's like you're within, it's like you can't do anything. And I just remember I was in the room editing and I, dog. Stop whining, please. I'm I'm on a arm, very important arm wrestling podcast here. Uh, I'm in the room editing, and it's like I can hear the party outside. I can hear the party down below. And it's like, oh, I'll take a break. I open my door, and it's like everyone's down there just drinking beers and just having fun and wrestling and doing all sorts of... And it's like... Okay. So... I got kind of a, an adopted son. His name's Lucas. Uh, he was my daughter's first uh, first boyfriend. Anyways, he kind of had a rough upbringing. Dog, what? He kind of had a rough upbringing and like really had no support as a teenager. And you know, we kind of took him in, and he calls me dad, and you know, we, we've just been close. And, he lives in uh, Southern California. He was, I was talking to him yesterday, and he's telling me how he, he's like a Harley guy. He likes to ride Harleys. And, uh, he's telling me he belongs to this motorcycle club. And he, uh, he loves the club because of, like, the, the camaraderie between the, all the guys. And they go riding. And it's like, it's, it's like the feeling you get with, like, this club. And it's like... The... A lot of you people may not know this because you're newer, but you haven't you haven't either started arm wrestling yet, you haven't been to a tournament. But let's say you found yourself in a situation where you went to all the big tournaments.
god, the phone died. Uh, it said my phone was overheating, so I gotta put it up against the AC. Anyways, uh, the I was telling the story about the camaraderie. Uh, Lucas was saying he joins this club for all these peeps, and it's like when you travel this dog stop whining man i'm driving you're gonna have to wait till i pull over again um can you guys hear that dog oliver uh so anyway it's just the feeling of like oh my gosh there's i have so many friends in this sport and that it's like a family reunion every time you come to a tournament it's like see these people that you've grown to love it's like uh i don't know i can't describe the feeling and the harley pole just one time one weekend is like so many people so many good matches and we're all stuck in this i mean it's not like a fancy hotel but like just the setup was like perfect we're all stuck there and everyone's just hanging out having fun it's like I can't describe the feeling of like how awesome it is to have that and uh, anyways I think it was 2008 Harley Pole that like stands out as just being like Mike Bowling oh my gosh why is this dog whining I took him I took him out I let him go pee are you hungry I fed you um, yeah, 2008 Harley Pole. Magical. You know, that being said, the, the ROTN, the after party, I think I posted the footage with Brent Rockers and like RBJ. The, the, the ROTN was very similar, but the reason I don't put it on the list is because the stress of, of, of putting on that event was so... I mean, it's so crazy. So it's like it mars the the experience. You're just so thankful that it's over, that it went off without, you know, any. I don't think we had any injuries. But the, you know, just those are different kind of like joys of seeing like your vision come together and someone seeing all the guys come out to support it and. Uh, You know, having someone have so much faith in you that they give you twenty thousand dollars, and you like, you know, you did, did them, did them, dude. What does this dog want, dude? I, I can't pull over again. I just let you out. Do you want to come up on the seat? Come on, come up here. crazy guys I can't believe I thought where's the action I want the chat to be blown up you know me I'm addicted to chats tell me about what's going on with all of you what is everyone doing like are you guys on your phone are you on like on a computer uh, how many people we got in the chat we have 26 where do you guys live? Put your hometown in the chat. Where are you right now? So I can, when I go back. Oh my God, this dog is killing me. This dog is killing me. Dude, I, I don't know what to tell you. Regina said you'd be a good companion and just sit there all day while we're driving. What do you want? I gotta let this dog out, I don't know what it is. Bro. <laughs> I'm pulling over.
It's 11.22. Are we close to John Brzezink? Come on, journalists. Arm TV, you work for Arm TV now. Tell me what is, tell me what's happening. When is John Brzezink arm wrestling? Come on, tell me. Kick down, kick down. Causing me grief, bro. I guess I should get gas. So, chat, give me something. Give me something. On a PC, connected, Marco, what's up? Don't forget to ride in the streets. Dog is car sick. He did stop for 10 minutes, like 20 minutes ago. So I'm gonna let the dog walk around and just, dog just text me. Come on, coach, killing me. Well, the thing is, I drove for 12 hours yesterday. He was fine. He didn't. Uh, he didn't cause this much uh, troubles. So I'll be back, people. David Meyer, I want my RMTV. Thank you very much. Cedar Rapids, Iowa. What's up? I think I passed through your town last night. Get gas. The dog. something interesting I'll be back in a second say something say something say something say something on TV nation when is John present arm wrestling I better have a time Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright. be enough buddy that better be enough from you son
Give me something good to read. How did you meet your dear lady? Oh, okay, sweet. Finally, guys, man. Oh, my God. It's Friday. I thought, oh, my God, it was a tough. Oh my God, are you serious? How did I think it was Saturday? I've been driving for so long, I'm delirious. For this whole time, I was thinking it was Saturday. <sighs> oh my God, that's right. John is tomorrow. Dude, here's the thing. I wasn't gonna leave on my road trip till Friday. And so yesterday I left and I was driving all day, so today I was thinking, Jesus, no shit. That is why. Oh my God, okay. How did I meet my wife? Uh, do you, any of you guys know, uh, go on YouTube and search killing, oh, when you're done with this, go on YouTube, search killing the fat man. Seva Matosi and Pauline John uh, interesting story. It's not arm wrestling related, but it's, it's my story. So I will tell you guys. Okay. So uh, where do I start? Pulling John, Seven Matosin. You guys watch Pulling. So there's that thread, right? We found the, we found the arm wrestling on the same weekend. Like it's a very interesting journey. We crossed paths a lot through those other years because we filmed, uh, you know, we were filming the same tournaments, covering the same peeps. Anyways, um, it was in the Michael Classic 2000, what's that, 2010 Michael Classic? Yeah, I think 2010 Michael Classic, Seven Masotosian was hanging out with uh, Devin Laird. He decided to come up to that tournament. Devin had been doing a little CrossFit. And uh, it was the tournament was over. I'm hanging out with Sevon, and Sevon says, uh, "Oh, I got a gig in China. I'm working on this move. I got, he's like, I'm working on a bunch of stuff, but I got uh, a gig in China that I don't know if I can make." And he's like, "Would you be interested if I like need an emergency backup?" And I was like, "Are you kidding me? Of course, man." He goes, "It wouldn't pay." It wouldn't pay anything, but it would uh, it would be obviously a free trip and a cool experience. And I was like, Psh. I said, dude, sign me up. Listen, if you ever need me for anything. So uh, that's planted a seed of like potentially doing something with Sevon. Up until that point, it always just been Sevon was working on pulling John. I was doing arm TV. We both had mad respect. Zeta, five, 80 West. We both had mad respect for each other. And now, Caroline, you asked me how I met my wife. That we're getting, we're getting into that. So we, uh, and this is a cool story. So if you're here, like it's worth listening, even though it's technically not arm wrestling, really. but the pulling John thread. Okay. So, um, that planted the seed, like maybe you never know. Well, anyways, YouTube is starting to get bigger. Cell phones were going crazy. Facebook, suddenly Gary Roberts, not so important anymore. You know, I'll never forget. I'll never forget. I guess there is a little arm wrestling. In it. I'll never forget. True story. True story. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. Don't, sorry, sorry. Okay, so true story. I'll never forget. I'll never forget. Arnold Classic, one year, I look out at the audience, very little cell phones. Like, it, it just didn't stand out. People having cell phones and holding them up. It only took one year. 
I'm up the stage, I'm filming the Arnolds, and I look out, and it's like, what's cell phones? Everyone's filming. And I'm like, holy shit. I'm done. Our TV is over. The day I look out of the audience, and there's a hundred cell phones, I'm like, I, I mean, my business plan, my business plan is fun meat. You know, in the early days, it was a couple guys who brought their camcorders that were filming. And they were like, dude, I don't want to bring my camcorder. Like, I'll let you film. I'll buy the DVD or just watch it on our TV. But now, everyone has a cell phone. You don't have to bring a, a camcorder. And everyone's filming. I think it was the year, I think that was the year that Don Underwood beat Devin Laird. And I was like, oh, this footage is going to get out fast. I better, I better upload it. Anyways, I knew my time was coming. Income was going down a little bit. New sign-ups. Getting thin. And I, one day it just occurred to me, like, oh, I bet my buddy pulling John. Sevon Matosian. I better give him a call. CrossFit is crack a lacking. So, right around that time was my 20 year high school reunion. I graduated high school in 1991. And uh, this was 2011. So, I was subject to going back. And I was. Here's the deal. I'm not vain. I'm not that vain. But in high school, you know, I was a popular dude. I feel like I was the guy who's like lots of friends with lots of different peeps, but I was not like I was like a normal dude. Well anyways, now I was a lot of overweight and uh, let myself my big arm TV plan was like, oh I don't care about my personal health. I'm just gonna blow arm TV up. Like forget about like I'm just always sitting down, always editing. My main focus, blow up arm TV worry about physical health later and uh, it was really a bad way to do things but that's what I was doing and because I traveled so much I just ate like shit fast food not good not good so I I'm I was thinking to myself I gotta lose some weight I can't go back to I can't go see old high school girlfriends friends when I'm overweight can't be doing that shit. So I started running. I started running. I was doing pretty good. I lost like 10 pounds. And uh, right around that time, it uh, was when I was like, oh, I should reach out to Sevon and see if there's any opportunity over at CrossFit. So I send Sevon an email. I say, hey, Sevon. YouTube is crushing. Now, keep in mind, as you guys get to know me, think about it. I'm a YouTuber now. Think about that. I come, at that time, I was so angry at YouTube because it was destroying my business model. It was destroying my way of life. So, not just YouTube, but it's easy to say YouTube. But really, cell phones, Facebook, YouTube. Just really put a kaboosh. So, I sent Seb on an email. Ironically, if I worked for CrossFit, all the media would be on YouTube. I would become basically a content creator for CrossFit. I, they are the creator, but I was creating content. So I asked Seb on, hey, you got any opportunity? He says, of course. But he said, and Caroline, if you're still here, type yes if you're still with me. Because I'm telling this story for you, you ask the question. And I have to have time, so I'm telling you the long version. All right? All right, all right. Type yes. You still here? Yeah? I don't see any. Uh-oh. Maybe a lost. Well, I can get started now. i got to continue. So, Seba Matosian. And mind you, if you guys are not following the Seba podcast... Can someone post the link? 
the Sevon podcast that Sevon's he's been heavily podcasting like like crazy uh, he primarily just covers uh, crossfitters now but uh, good dude give him a like subscribe and share anyways he sends me back an email he says of course there's opportunity for CrossFit but you can't work for CrossFit unless you do CrossFit and I was like oh that makes sense he goes I'll tell you what I'll put you in a CrossFit gym but you gotta let me film it you gotta let me film your experiences I don't know how long you guys cut out but uh he's like if you want to work for CrossFit, you got to do CrossFit. But he totally encouraged me. He's like, I envision you doing RMTV. Keep doing RMTV. Like, he had no way wanted me to stop doing RMTV. He thought, you know, uh, the whole gig with CrossFit for many years, it was just contract basis. So it was project after project. I wasn't like a official employee. Just, I got paid per gig and I got paid well. Like, he took, homie took care of me. But he totally envisioned that I would do, still do RMTV. I, need a, I can't tell if I cut up and just, damn it. No, I know it's not good. Okay, I'm sorry. The Drew, did I miss you anything? Let me know if I missed any part of the story. So anyways, he's like, I put you in the gym, let me film your experiences. So the thing is, and here's the thing about, here's the thing about Sevan. I, I took, if you're still in here, I told you the best job the best boss in the world to have uh, worked for I mean the, the best guy I've got a little documentary coming out it's, I, I don't even know if it rates this documentary the behind the scenes of the pulling John premiere it's really cool it's got some cool interviews with Sevon uh, about that and uh, I'm trying to finish that up but, I, but I'm a loser anyways I remember he came He's like, you ready to go to the gym? I was like, okay, I'm ready. So he comes to the gym and he films me. And uh, hard, hard, hard. It's on the internet. YouTube, Killing the Fat Man. You'll see it. It has a million views. Episode one has a million views. It really went viral. It's the first thing I ever did that like went viral. And uh, a lot of people still message me saying that they watched that series. And uh, anyways, I remember we came back and I told Sevon. Sevon's like, listen, here's the deal. If you want to lose weight, you've got to go five days a week. He's like, you've got to go to the gym five days a week. You can't go three days. Three days of maintenance. Five days is change. I said, okay, I'll go five days a week. I said, but I've got, um, I've got, um, I've got two arm wrestling tournaments coming up on the East Coast. And because I I can't afford two tickets, I was just gonna stay out there. So I was gonna fly out, stay probably like Travis's house, and then go to the next tournament and come back. And he reached in, he went to the bank, he gave me like $400 to buy another plane ticket to make sure that I came back that week so I didn't miss a gym workout. Like he just pulled 400 bucks out of his uh, ATM and gave it to me. It's like, eh, nice guy, huh? So, he follows me for three months. I basically lose like 45, 50 pounds. And uh, he cuts the episodes together. It's like 12 episodes. It has the mid views. It was awesome. I start doing CrossFit projects. And, uh, you know, I did CrossFit. Anyways, long story short. We're getting to the point. How did I meet the wife? So now fast forward a few years. I am, when I go, to, when I get into something, it's hard for me to, to multitask my time. So the thought of filming arm, 2011 and 12, yes, I filmed arm wrestling and CrossFit. But it, now when I look at my cat all the tournaments I filmed, I know I filmed 32 tournaments of 2006. 37 tournaments in 2000, whatever, you know, you go 2010, 11, 12, it goes from 30 to 20 to like 12 to four. It's like I dropped off, the more I filmed CrossFit, the more arm wrestling dropped off and it just, 
it just happened and because I kept getting behind on CrossFit projects I didn't have I couldn't cover arm wrestling you wouldn't have seen the footage because I was so behind anyways fast forward we are getting to the good shit on how I met my wife so I'm in I'm working for CrossFit for now a number of years I've slacked on my gym I've slacked on my diet the weight starts the weight starts piling on a little bit and uh, during that time I sold we moved we sold all our shit and bought a, a 37 foot the trailer and we we're traveling around the country the crazy thing is that I envisioned that I would buy it what Michael Todd did he has monster all over the side of the bus I envisioned having an arm TV bus where I, I had an arm TV all over the side of this big freaking like concert but concert rock band bus carrying a custom trailer that transformed like the sides would pop down and it would transform into a stage with lights and I could have a tournament everywhere and literally I was gonna just drive around the country and pop up arm wrestling tournaments it was gonna be the greatest thing ever accomplished in arm wrestling but arm TV fizzled out cell phones Facebook YouTube crushed my dreams and my soul luckily Sevan Matosian saved my ass he gave me a great job he helped me lose 50 pounds it was beautiful now I became a CrossFitter sold all my shit wife and I moved into an RV we're traveling the country uh, one day now if you if you want to watch Killing the Fat Man series what I'm about to tell you is Killing the Fat Man uh, season 2 I'm gonna sum it up because it's the story right I've been live for uh, 184 minutes so uh, I gotta go back I gotta go back I gotta do the back story uh, I met my previous wife in uh, 1993 Super Bowl weekend it was the night before we met and uh, you know just military guys we get married fast man it's crazy we get married fast I go out to a club I meet this girl you know we hit it off right she tells me your story I tell her my story and it turns out that her lifelong like uh, high school boyfriend had just broke up with her and uh, they were they were they were gonna run off and get married and, and I was like whoa that's crazy Anyways, he was right in the middle of that breakup and they hadn't spoken and I don't know how in the world, but within like three months, her and I are, are married. It's crazy. We just run off, we get married. She was about to marry the high school boyfriend. I guess I swooped in and I like the broken out. It was a definite uh, rebound scenario. In fact, during our whirlwind romance, um, he calls her and he changes his mind. He goes, I, I changed my mind. I, I do. I want you to come. He was, he was in the Air Force. He's like, I want you to come to and we'll get married. And I grabbed the phone. I said, Dave, you, you done messed up. You done, dog, I took you for a walk, bro. I don't know what you want. We're on a timeline. I'm sorry. So I tell, uh, I tell the dude, I was like, dude, you missed the boat, right? Mr. Boat, it's, we're in love. We're going to get married. I'm sorry, bro. Anyways, so we go, we go get married, man. She puts on her high school prom dress. And, uh, you know, we were 20, 20 years old. She was 19. It's crazy. Marines do stupid shit like this. You know, when you go away and you experience, like, boot camp, and then you're taken from your family, and you're being yelled at, it's, Somehow everyone gets married. You get paid more to get married. So I don't know. I think uh, my roommate in the barracks, he was uh, smelly. Didn't ever clean his foot locker and the whole room stank. And so when I was always over at Anissa's house, I'd, I'd always come back and I'd have to clean up his mess. And, and it was like, oh, if I'm married, I could live off base. And I thought I was in love. And crazy shit. So we get married. Anyways, she still friends with this guy. And, uh, she even invites him to the wedding. What? What wedding, you say? We've already been married. 
Well, nobody knew that. We didn't tell any of the family. In fact, when I went to go ask her father if I could marry his daughter, uh, he said, no, you need to have like a year engagement for me to be happy with this wedding. So we agreed that the wedding wouldn't happen for a year, but we went out, ran off and got married anyways. So even though we were married, we still planned a wedding a year later, which she invited the high school love of her life. And uh, little did I know that, that the night before they hung out, he was trying to talk her out of getting married to me. He was still trying to get her back. And uh, believe me, this all has a point in the story and how I meet my current wife, okay? It does, it does have a point if you're hanging in uh, with us. Tell me, you still here? Let me see. 33 people, 33 crazy people still listen to me in the car. Okay, so uh, he comes to the wedding. You know, I, nice guy, right? And all good, man. I uh, No hard feelings that I took your girl. Okay, so wedding's done. Fast forward a couple years, we were trying to be friends with him and his now new wife, but he, we went to Washington one time, we all had like a couple's dinner, and the wife said, no, you can't hang out, you still have feelings for your ex-wife, I can feel it. Buddy, hey man, I don't know what's going on, but I need you to be chill. So, fast forward 20 years, guys, 20 years. Um, we're on a road trip, I'm working CrossFit, living in an RV, got a you know, Ford 350 towing around this big fifth wheel. Life is awesome. Uh, now mind you, during that marriage, 20 something years, I didn't believe in divorce, I never wanted to live away from my kid. There were signs like, oh, maybe we rushed into, maybe we rushed into marriage. But we were committed, man. Committed people, Anissa and I. Committed to this, you know, raising a child and, you know, trying to hang out there. Well, anyways, we're on, uh, we are, I don't remember where we're at, somewhere on the East Coast. And uh, she says, oh, you'll never guess who reached out to me. And I said, who? She said, Dave. I was like, what? Now, mind you, she tried to contact him on Facebook throughout the years, but he, like, disappeared. He wasn't really a social media guy. And so she was really excited to reach out to him. And finds out he's no longer married, yada, yada. And she, like, perks up. Like, oh, my gosh, this is uh, great to be chatting with him again. And then, like, a couple weeks later, she lets me know that they've been, like, chatting. And I was like, ah, blah, 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 blah. And, uh... I remember she tells me, hey, you might get a call from his ex-wife. And I was like, okay. And she's like, well, I'm just, she's not really happy that we're, we've been chatting. And uh, she says, I wonder if Gary knows that Anissa's talking to Dave and I'm going to call him up. And she's like, I just want to let you know. And I'm like, well, is there, is there something, I mean, like... I don't know what the big deal is. Like, are you just chatting? I am not a jealous person. I'm like, dude, catch up with your man. Like, no big deal. Your, your old boyfriend, no big deal. Like, and so like, I don't know how it happened. It's been a few years now, but basically like, it came out that she like, was thinking things. Like, wondering what ifs. What if they never broke up or whatever this. And I was like, I say jokingly, well, I, I always felt like you thought deep down inside that you married the wrong guy. She loved me, don't get me wrong, but we were besties. And there was more signs there was more like friends than, which is natural after two decades of marriage or whatever. And so I said, what I said jokingly like you want a hall pass to like see and she like laughed it off but it was like anyways somehow over the course of time it was like wait you would or you know it was really an awkward moment but it was like there was enough there that like yeah, maybe I would like would you 
dumb. Anyways, I ended up talking to Dave, and he's like, you would really do that? And I was like, dude, if you're telling me that after 20 years that she feels even a fraction that she married the wrong guy, like, I'm not gonna, I, dude, I don't want, like, I'm not gonna put us, like, you know what I'm saying? If you say after 20 years, you feel you married the wrong guy, bro, there's the door. Like, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not, bro, like, I don't want you thinking you married the wrong dude. I'm not that kind of guy. We can go have at it. Like, see if we, I said, but be warned. Like, what if he's not as awesome as you thought he was? Like, uh, you know, everyone thinks it's awesome in the first days, and then you find out their closets, they've got skeletons or whatever. So, make a long story short, the CrossFit games were, were coming up, and I gotta leave town. And I, I say, listen, if you're gonna, like, now mind you, the kid's grown up and out, and now it's just two peeps, essentially retired. I work from home, not retired, so I'm into work, but it's like, living a kind of retired life in an RV and chilling, just editing videos, working for the greatest company, greatest boss in the world, Seven on the Toasty. So I was like, hey dude, are you, before you actually say you should do something like that, you should, you should test drive the vehicle. And I said, I'm fine, go test drive. Ain't no thing. So I go to the CrossFit Games while they're having a weekend away. And I'm hanging out with Sevan Matosi and pulling John. And he's like, yo, what's up? And I said, I'm kind of going through some personal stuff. My my wife potentially thinks that she's uh, uh, having, still has feelings after all these years for the high school boyfriend that I took her away from like the, the, the weekend they broke up. Mind you, if you've been listening to the whole story, they broke up literally this weekend that she went out to this club with her friend. She wasn't there because she was like clubbing. She was just a friend who was dragged her there looking for her boyfriend for something else. And I just happened to meet her and we talk and because I'm so fucking awesome, you know, she's like, hey, this guy's not too bad. And next thing you know, I'm because I'm a Marine and all we do is think about marriage, uh, we run off and get married. A couple years later, daughter's born, and then, you know, I'm committed. I don't give up on shit, so we spend 20-plus years uh, raising a kid. Anyways, Seva Matosian, I tell him what's going on, and his mouth just hits the floor. He's like, what are you saying? I said, right now, my wife is having a rendezvous with uh, her high school sweetheart, and I gave them permission. And uh, he, Sevan's like, you are fucking kidding me. He's like, there's no way that that's true. There's no way that that's true. I said, it's true. It's right now. Just talk to her. They just went to Disneyland. He's like, dude, I gotta, I gotta have a, I gotta have a documentary. This is the craziest, like Jerry Springer documentary shit I've ever heard in my life, and uh, it can't be real. And he goes, there's no way your wife is gonna leave you for the high school boyfriend and I was like I don't know dude this seemed pretty exciting and uh, I'm like you know I'm not the kind of guy that's gonna stop that like so I want somebody who wants to be with me yo so long story short the CrossFit games are over Sevon tells me I bet money that this is just a thing so we leave. I said, okay, I'll keep you posted. So we leave. CrossFit games are over. I, I was in Wisconsin that weekend. I traveled back. And uh, uh, the thing is, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Okay. The thing is, up until that entire thing, I was totally cool. Like, I was like, whatever. No big thing. But... The minute uh, I, sh I begged her, take it slow. Don't do anything rash. Don't do anything stupid, because you don't know if that's for real. Like, it, like why? Like I said, I'm not going anywhere. I said, 
I said I encourage you, you know, you should have, just have a boyfriend on site. We'll have our relationship, which, again, we were more just homies, raising a kid, but, you know, best friends at that point. And I said, you know, don't make any rash decisions. Well, she came back that weekend. She's like, I think I'm going to do it. I think we're going to be together. And uh, I guess I've always known since high school that those feelings never left. And that put a wedge in our relationship. And it's probably one of the reasons why we never really felt. I mean, that first initial connection, we obviously felt something. But then over the course of the long haul, you're raising children. It's like, really? Were we meant to be married? I don't know if we were. Uh, and then I'm sure it didn't help that I picked arm wrestling over her for many trips and, and really made her feel less valued because of arm wrestling. I was so, it was so stressful to try to pay bills that I made it that important. Like, listen, this pays the bills. So this has to be first always. And uh, I nail it out. CrossFit became very lucrative and was paying the bills, and so, you know, I, arm wrestling had nothing to do with us breaking out, but they did drive a red wedge between us at certain points. Anyways, long story short, she's like, I'm going to try it. And I said, are you sure you're really, like, ready for that now? I said, shouldn't you take your time? And she's like, no, I'm fine. So then I call up Sevan, and I said, dude, that's really happening. And then it hit me and I got like really sad about it and I was like, I guess because of the speediness of it, it's like, and I did uh, gain some weight back and I was not feeling like great about myself. And I was like, I get that you've always loved your, the, the high school boyfriend, you know, I guess the, that spark never left. But the fact that you were able to leave me so fast when I thought you would take it slow, was kind of like put a dagger in my heart and I was feeling really down. And Seven Matosin, he's like, listen, come to Santa Cruz, we'll get you back in the gym, get you fit. Oh, 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 I forgot. I forgot, I forgot, I forgot. Man, the whole point of the story is, so I'm, and so the CrossFit media team, there's like eight of us guys and we're all in the room and I'm telling what's going on and everyone's like, have you ever, you ever seen the videos? There's like a video where somebody says something and then all eight guys go, oh, what? Like they can't believe it, but they all just erupt in laughter. And then somebody cues music to it. And it's like, it's a, like a meme and it's on replay. That's exactly what happened. So I'm telling this like nonchalantly, like dude banging my wife right now. And uh, they're like, oh, crazy. And uh, basically, oh, someone else is like, we got to get you on Tinder. There is no way your wife getting some action right now and you're not getting some action. So like, let's get you on Tinder right now. We get you to meet somebody. And I was like, I can't, I can't, I can't do it. I can't do it. I didn't download the app. And so anyways fast forward a few weeks when uh, when uh, uh, it came to like be that like hey it's gonna experiment with that relationship and it's gonna be like a full time thing I called Seva and I was like hey okay I'm moving on I'm gonna go on Tinder I'm gonna go on some dates get my mind off of uh, get my mind off of uh, things so anyways um, I do, I, t I was like, I'm done moping, I'm like, it is what it is, like, I'm awesome, but we weren't meant to be together, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, like, I'm not gonna mope, I'm just not that kind of guy, I pick myself up, and I move the fuck on, that's how I roll, okay, so, uh, Sevon's like, so the first Killing the Fat Man, if you watch the series, you know, it's, it's, it goes into my entire history and how I got out of shape and yada, 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 yada. But, oh my gosh. Dude, I can't stop every half an hour taking her walk. We are on a deadline, pooch. And I fed you. I gave you water. You went to the bathroom. So tough. Suck it up, buddy. 
Anyways, Sevon's like, oh, season two can be all about you getting in shape and going on Tinder and like getting laid, man. You know, Sevon's funny like that. And I was like, oh, I'd love to get in shape again. That sounds fun. So I moved my RV up to Santa Cruz and I hit the gym hard, hit the nutrition hard, and I started going on a bunch of Tinder dates and Sevon films the entire experience. And the whole thing is, is I was like, I'm not really a player. I don't, you know, I'm not, I'm just not that. I, I just, I don't like to, you know, in theory, it sounds nice. Hey, just go get laid and have lots of sex. But it's like, that only works if like the other person is 100% down with that. Like I'm not the kind of guy that would like misrepresent a situation to get, you know, a piece of ass. It's like I just tell you, here's what's going on in my life. Here's what's happening. I'm not interested in a relationship, but I'm willing to have some fun. Anyways. Belita. Uh, basically, uh, Seven almost covered my dates and stuff, and it was like hit and miss. And I had, had a little side relationship with this wonderful girl named Emma, and she was like really heartbroken that didn't like work out. But it's like that was like one of those where it's like I'm feeling something, but it's like I can't get involved. That's committed. Then it all changed, man. I go on this coffee date with Caroline, and it's like, you know, shit just happens. It just clicks, and it just, you go one day, you're like, I can never do a relationship again. I'll never get married again. I'm not interested. And then the next thing you meet somebody, and you're like, I would do anything for that girl. Like, that just happens. And it happened to be, so she was like, I was talking about, you know, raising children my daughter and you know it was a bit of a struggle trying to build a business and uh, 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 anyways she's like it sounds like you wouldn't do it again and I was like well you know if there's love if there's love and I like I didn't know I'm not trying to say that to like impress a girl it just like for so many years I thought oh I never have I, I mean uh, I don't like to struggle, right? Like, when you're raising a kid, like, kids are expensive. And it's like, we only were ever, our budget only afforded one child, if that. So it was always, that was it. Never had another kid. And then all my resources went into, like, on TV. So it was like, there was never any talk of any other children. And, you know, anyway, so you meet a girl, you're just like, you're awesome. And I was like, I, you know, I'm not, I said, if there's love and you know, we were, became inseparable after that. And I, I went back to seven, I was like, I met a girl and he's like, what, what happened to all the Tinder have fun? It was supposed to be like lots of ladies. And I'm like, you know, I tried to do that. I tried to do that, but that's just, I'm not that, uh, not that kind of guy. So long story short, I meet Caroline in uh, 2017. And uh, the, the phone, the picture I have on my phone is the picture that we took that, that very next week. And it was like, you know, it just happens. You just, when you fall in love, you'll do anything for a girl. And, uh, you know, a lot of people, when I tell that story, they're like, I can't believe it. It's like, dude, I was married. I was married for, I can't remember, so 1996. I mean, uh, 1993, we got married, and I met Caroline in 2017. I don't think my um, divorce was finalized in 2018. So you didn't do the math. 2018 minus 1993. How many years is that? Uh, it's a lot of years. Anyways, you know, it's like I knew the status of my relationship. It wasn't like a shock. But you know, you do the best of what you got, and when you don't give up on things, you, you just keep uh, trying. But it's like, hey man, if you tell me after, after two decades you still are in love with your high school sweetheart, 
who you were inseparable with and who you were with all who was your first and you were with your entire uh so uh you know i wish them the best they're awesome and uh you know it's all good it's all we're all tight everything's fine it's amazing and uh now i'm i have a beautiful 19 month old uh, uh, baby boy who's not really a baby anymore he's you know feeding himself eating with silverware and he just last night he just walked up flight of stairs without holding on for the first time it's like it's amazing and it's been a magical experience I didn't know I could love I didn't know I had love in my heart for for uh, a baby again and uh, when I met him and uh, it's just like he's my homie and I just I just think that all things lined up that brought him into my life and uh, I, everything was meant to be meeting Caroline and having my bubby and, uh, and now we have a five month old little girl or five months pregnant little girl and uh, my son was born on leap day February uh, and this baby girl is due right around February so life is crazy and uh, I'm thankful that uh, she's been open enough to let me try my hands at the uh, arm wrestling again and see what comes of it. And uh, booyah, that's the story of how I met, met my wife, yo. <sighs> I think that's it. We'll end, end on that note. I thank you very much for uh, following me. I thank you for all the support. I thank uh, all the hardcore peeps who believe in what we're doing and uh, being back in the sport of arm wrestling hasn't been without its hiccups. As you know, I created drama at certain points in my life, but uh, I'm over over all the things I've ever, you know, I was a bit jaded. Here's to be honest. When I came back into the sport of arm wrestling, I was 100% jaded. I came back because I was sad that people didn't know what arm TV was anymore. And I kind of wanted to like say, hey, fuck you. Here's what we did. And uh, we didn't support you. Or we didn't. Anyways, I was really jaded. And uh, with all like Alex and schoolboy stuff, I, you know, there were some arms like I just was a jaded individual and uh, I meant but it, like anything else when I first got in the sport of arm wrestling like it's like oh this is like cool business idea but then you fall in love with the people and you fall in love with the sport again and it's like uh, seeing the jadedness wear off and fall in love with it all over again and then I actually do some arm wrestling. It's like, I, I do love it. And uh, it, to be able to, if I could ever make it like a business again where it could like help provide, you know, as a, I'm most like my, my quote title would be like stay at home dad who has a side gig arm wrestling. And uh, I would love nothing more to be able to contribute and say that uh, my passion has helped create you know something that can provide for my family like it used to uh, you know that would be amazing uh, if you've been with us from the beginning arm tv topped out of like 528 members i used to think for me to truly explode my thoughts and ideas that i needed about 2000 and uh only got 25% of that. But now here, you know, the whole world's changing, all sorts of new crazy shit. But like, I've been doing, I've been pumping my trade Patreon, and we only have 13 Patreon members. It's crazy to think that uh, back then I was able to get 500 people to subscribe to like a monthly service fee for providing arm wrestling content. It's like the world is so different than what it was. But it's like. You know what? 
uh, I look back at all those memories as like a magical, a magical time and a magical experience, and uh, it's just uh, an honor to be able to, to revisit it and re-fall in love and, and meet people and connect with, like, like I said, the 2008 Harley poll, like that, you know, the feeling you get when you see all these guys and how close you are with them and so many brothers and sisters and just family. To be able to like have a shot at doing that again, I was like, it's amazing. And uh, anyways, I think that's it, guys. I could swear I thought Texas State was today. This entire broadcast, I thought was Saturday. I'm a complete day off because driving got me all discombobulated. I thought it was Saturday. That's how I put in the title, Dimitri and John. Brisson. Can you believe that? I am an idiot. That's bananas. But thanks for the chat. Waking me up. St. John Brzezink is tomorrow. How in the world could I get this wrong? That's what being on a road for hours after hours can do to a right person. And this dog, Oliver. I'm going to, uh, before I end this feed, I'm just going to show you who's been whining this whole time. Thank you very much for all your support. Click like and subscribe. And that's, dude, why are you whining, bro? I fed you, I've given you snacks, I took you for peas, I took you for poops. What do you want? What do you want, Oliver? Peace, guys.